very much. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, depending on when you're watching it back, if you're watching it back. Uh, and good morning, Daniel. Thanks for jumping on with us morning, this morning, buddy. buddy. How are we doing, mate? How are we doing? How's things over that way? I've noticed good. you're in uh, Sunny Savvy Towers this morning. Yeah, I, I'm in Sunny Sunny Side. Um, <laughs> but I, I see it, I, yeah. Came, came into the office today, so yeah. Looks nice and bright. Looks nice and bright over it that way as well, which is yeah. always a good start. Yeah, dude, dude it's like it's a uh, like like I said, the, the bulls aren't in today, so uh, it's probably a bit fortunate because uh, last time um, I was in, it was like insane. It was like a sandstorm in here. Like me and Hayden couldn't even be in the room. So <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, like we had to actually go to different because it was just like a cloud of smoke in the room. So we were yeah. like leaving, like, but uh, yeah, so it's, it's a bit better today. So that's fine. And just say you have like a little pair of goggles on each, trying to see the screen, and just wipe them, wiping the, oh, wipe the dust literally off the front. Got some safety glasses there. <laughs> PPE, <laughs> mate. PPE. And dust masks as well. It's like that's it, and that links in perfectly with what we covered last session. Um, <laughs> which because because we looked at health and safety, we looked at um making sure that when we are in a fitness environment. We are um, working as safely as possible because, of course, keeping yourself safe, avoiding injuries, avoiding niggles and setbacks is one of the best ways to stay consistent, isn't it? You know, it's yeah. something that we've talked about over the last few weeks as well. You know, if you can identify potential hazards, stuff that might actually cause harm and work around them, you know, that's where we can identify and, you know, um, assign proper pieces of PPE. Um, exactly. If we're talking like a work environment as well, whatever environment we're in, it's a really helpful skill to be able to um, identify stuff that could potentially cause harm either to yourself or to others you know and course, and, and find ways to to minimize that risk you know it's ideal if we can remove the risk entirely you know and um, that's not always possible unfortunately so so yeah sometimes we do need it, it like you say it, it'll be safety goggles it'll be coveralls to cover your clothes and keep your uniform safe stuff like that you know um potentially even um sort of like I know you can get thicker gloves that are really it's almost impossible to cut through with like blades if you're working with machinery and stuff like that um so 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 yeah that's a really important skill to have and like I say that's not just in a work environment that's in a fitness environment now that might in practice look more like making sure that cleaning equipment's away after you you know or being aware of any cleaning signs that might have been been left out any equipment that must have been left out you know I've tripped over um I've tripped over plates and dumbbells and kettlebells in the gym before you know and I've 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 done it while I'm already carrying weight as well, you know. So it's you'll know yourself if you're if you're carrying something and then like kick something and stub your toe and you almost like lose your balance. It's so much harder to get your balance back. You're so much more likely to fall. And if you've got like a 40, 60, whatever kilogram barbell on your back, if you've been doing walking lunges or whatever, you can really hurt yourself. Um, and and it might not even be your fault. You know, someone else might have left that bit of kit there. So it, it kind of, that's why the responsibility is, is on us to make sure we tidy up after ourselves. But, you know, yeah, also right. be aware that not everybody might have done that. So just to keep yourself safe, check the area that you're going to be using beforehand. Yeah, it's yeah, all well yeah. and good to, to say somebody else has left that there when it's you who's got your leg in the cast and can't exercise for six months. You know, it doesn't matter who left it there. Um, It's going to be you that's going to, that, that's going to suffer really because of that. Um. Yeah, exactly right. And uh, also, it's like, don't like, uh, you know, if it's um, ask maybe don't be afraid to ask for help, right? Because if, if you don't think like, oh, if someone's left like two hundred k on the bar in on the, in the squat rack or something, if that's going to be like a, mm -hmm. a, a nightmare for you or maybe potentially dangerous, then you shouldn't have to like try and exert yourself if it's going to be too too heavy for you. You know, you should maybe ask, say like, oh, can you help me get this weight up? And then I'm sure that anyone yeah. in the gym is going to be happy to help you. You know, because unfortunately that's a that's a reality isn't it that like you know you'll see some uh person that like you know they'll, they'll the squats are mid insane but then they'll leave all the weight on the bar after they're leaving obviously if it's yeah. a limb, limbic bar generally if you take only 20 off it shouldn't tip the bar but obviously if you take too much weight off it will and um so yeah obviously that's it, 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 it it's a shame that, that people do that and obviously um yeah so sometimes if you ask i'm sure if you ask someone to help you like de rack the rates i'm sure they'd be more than happy to Absolutely, yeah. There's absolutely no harm in, in in asking for a little bit of help. And again, we we sort of mentioned before that's something you can you can get a feel for on your induction. You know how helpful do do you feel like the staff are going to be? How comfortable do you feel, or would you feel going up and asking them for a little bit of advice or guidance? You know, I mean, it stands to reason that the people that I've worked with more over the years, clients maybe that are new to the gym, new to fitness, setting themselves some new goals. 
chances are they're not, like you say, buddy, going to be able to come along and, like, they're not going to be as strong probably as someone who's just come along and done 200 kilograms on, like, an Olympic squat on a leg press or something like that, you know? I've been working with clients who have got a bad back. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, I've got a bad back and I'm using a bit of kit with them and saying, when you're in by yourself, come over and use this because it's safe for, for your current sort of uh, abilities you're not going to hurt yourself you're not going to make your back any worse and it's really going to start to strengthen and she's had to come over to me in the middle of another pt session with a different client and say rob i'm really sorry but there's nobody else here to ask and i can't use that bit of kit that you've told me to use because there's 200 kilograms on it and you know that is why where yeah it shouldn't be a problem to go up and ask for help and you should always feel comfortable asking for help but really we should we shouldn't be in a position i don't think where you've got to deal with that you know and that, that's where it comes down to me making sure that you're putting stuff away yourself mm -hmm. if you've used it you know i've mentioned before i've i've seen people in the gym that i've mentioned and said to them look will you put your kit away next time when you're done um and explained all of this to them you know not just unreasonable gone up and said put that away you know what i mean and really called them out on the gym floor i've not done anything like that and then like you see them at the end of a set where it would take 30 seconds to strip the bar down and just put the weights back. They'll spend five minutes just sort of stood loitering and looking to see if anybody's watching before they just sneak away. And I'm like, it would have been quicker to just put the stuff away. Like, is it that much of an inconvenience for you to put stuff away when, you, when you're done? You know, um, so I was always trying to be on top of people and making sure that they were, that they were sort of um, being proactive um, with that sort of thing. But like you say, but at the end of the day, it's, it's hard to enforce 100% of the time. There might be times when when, when you come across a, an environment. It might not necessarily just be a barbell. It's an environment that has been left in a, in a condition that, you know, it's going to be sort of potentially hazardous or, or certainly risky for you to be using. So, unfortunately, you know, there will be times where, again, you've got to say to somebody, will you give us a hand clearing this up or you know, potentially just making sure that things are squared away yourself. Because like, so, well, like, like, uh, like I say, if, if anybody's going to suffer the consequences, it's going to be you, unfortunately, which is why, yeah, we've got to make sure that everything is safe before we start using it, you know. Uh, and, and later on, we'll get a little bit of a, a, an idea on how we can make sure the kit's safe before we use it as well, you know, making sure the handles aren't going to come off the barbells weights aren't going to slide off um, and, and sort of fall on you if you're pressing overhead and stuff like that so we'll get a look into that as well pins as well like that's a one that people uh, i think happens quite a lot is where the pin's not in properly on a machine yes and then, like, yeah yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll they'll plate loaded like, machines yeah. yeah they'll go to like exert a lot of strength but then the pin will come out and it'll be like, whoosh, like yeah but that's it yeah the next thing you clatter f fortunately that's you know that's gonna not gonna do much damage to the person other than the machine but you know you could break the machines and uh i mean i guess you could if you're expecting a lot of weight and then the pin comes out and you, you know you end up over exerting yourself but uh perhaps not as dangerous as if that happened with like a you know, free weights maybe, but yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. And of course with, with stuff like that, um, of course you've got the, with a, with like proper free weights, you've got obviously the, the, the risk of the weights and stuff like that. Whereas on a machine, obviously the cables can snap, true. which again, like the weights true, aren't yeah. going to physically land on you, but you know, a cable, if it snaps under tension, it can go everywhere. You've seen a hose. If, if you haven't got hold of a hose and you turn, turn the water on full blast, it's going to be all over the place. And the cable can do exactly the same, exactly like a resistance band can, uh, which is something that we're going to talk about a little bit later on as well. You, you see people as well in the gym doing like exercises where with the cables, where it's like you, they'll be standing so far away from the actual cable and it'll be putting it under so much tension. And I'm thinking like, it probably sh shouldn't do that exercise. Maybe, you know what I mean? Like, or, like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, obviously, that's what they're built for, the cables, but, like, they'll, they'll do certain exercises, like, where maybe if they're doing, like, a crunches or something and they've stretched the cable, like, to its absolute limit, and yeah, I think yeah, like yeah. that kind of stuff, yeah. can, uh, you know, that's it. It's, it can't be can't be too good for the, for the cables. Definitely, yeah. And, of course, not not just so, sort of like, in proper use, but you get wear and tear as well. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, you, you think, like, it's it's a cable that's holding up literally as much weight as people pick every single time, you know, and some of them stacks do get pretty heavy. So, yeah, you do get wear and tear. And, and, and like I say, any, anything in the gym, you're going to have the same thing with, you know, uh, a conv uh, like the, the belt on a treadmill will wear down, you know, it'll start to stick in certain areas, which is why your maintenance is so important, where as an instructor, that's part of your responsibility as well to make 
make sure that all this kit is safe before it's out on the gym floor, before the public and, and your members can come along and use it as well. So so health and safety is absolutely massive in a, in a, in a fitness environment as well as a work environment. So if that's something that you'd like to have a little bit of recap on, uh, by all means, go back and check out uh, last week's session as well because me and um, it was Haytham last week, I think. So me and Haytham talked about that um, in quite a lot of depth last week. So go back and check that out. That'll be session three. Uh, yeah, by all means, go back and revisit that session. Um, we also looked at moving on to looking at um, sort of the the work side and the employment side of things a little bit more. We were looking at um, strengths and areas for improvement. So um, we've looked in the last couple of weeks at the Do It Life website, you know, to help um, with volunteering and stuff, which is on on, on our website that you're familiar with as well, bud. Yeah, I do. Um, so we were looking at that, and we were looking at um, looking at a post, and then sort of taking away. And doing a little bit of self-reflection and thinking, okay, what are my strengths and weaknesses for this post? You know, am I good with people? Am I patient? Am I organized? Do I feel like I've got good time management skills? Is it important? Um, what areas will I need to improve on? You know, because something that we've talked about as well before, you know, you can have a passion and a real desire to go and do something and you can have natural strengths, but that doesn't mean that there aren't areas that you can improve that are going to make you even better at that job, you know, areas that you can really round yourself off, add extra skills, whatever it might be, you know, so there might always be an area that you can improve in to say, okay, um, this job requires me to deal with the public. I am really patient. I've got good customer service skills, but I'm not really good with technology. And this job is asking me to log a lot of stuff on computers and stuff like that. You know, that might be a job that you really want to go do or a vocational area that you want to step into. So being able to identify what skills you can add can just um, increase your, um, not only your chances of getting into that field, but how effective you can be when you get there as well you know because if you're doing something because it's a passion and because you want to make a difference of course when you get into that role you do want to be making a difference and you do want to be making the most of it as well you know um, it's, it's important to be able to look and say where can I improve to make myself better and then even more importantly you could argue strengths and weaknesses of uh, or positives uh, and negatives of the job role itself you know, so again, you might find a job that you really want to do. You might decide that you really want to be in production, you know, spray painting something that really, really interests you. All of a sudden you look at the job post and it says, right, um, this job requires you to work three shifts. You know, you're going to be on a night shift every third week, which for some people, that might be a bit of a positive, you know, truth be told, buddy, I didn't used to mind there. Uh, I used to do back shift rather than night shift. So I'd be more like sort of two till midnight ish. Yeah. But you know what? Yeah. At five o'clock when the office staff went home and the gaffers locked up the office, it was a case of, do you know what? Yeah, we can just, we'll stick the radio on. Everything relaxes a little bit more. I didn't mind the back shift, but if you've got, if you've got kids and you've got other responsibilities and, and other commitments and stuff like that, that might just not be possible for you as well. So, you know, it might be, um, it might be a field that you really want to work in. It might be a job position that really sounds like it interests you. Um, but you've also got to think about the practical applications and the pros and cons of, of being in that job as well. You know, that was where we were talking. Um, is it good pay? Uh, you know, is it is it not so good pay, but there are other benefits that sort of make up for that, you know, flexibility. Can you, can you work in hours that suit you and go, go and uh, get the kids every day from school and take a little bit of time off during the week and make it up on the weekend, you know, different positions and different companies are going to, are going to offer you different options, you know? So again, it might be a case of, okay, this position is perfect for me. That's what I want to do. I feel like it suits my skills very well, but I don't feel like this post and with this employer is right for me because X, Y, Z, you know what I mean? It might be a case of I'm working by myself in a booth by myself and spraying by myself all day. Whereas I'd rather be working with other people. I'm a bit more social. I'd rather have people around me all day. You know, it's not, it's not always going to make and break a job, but it's always something that we have to consider. You know, you work on hours, you pay your responsibilities and other sacrifices that you might have to make, you know, because again, you might just be able to sidestep into the same job essentially, but without those negatives, just by looking at a different company or a different post or a different listing, you know, um, different companies will do the same job totally differently, you know, so it's always worth having a look around. And like I say, it's all, always worth thinking about the, um, like I say, the positives and the, and the negatives of, of, of any position that you're looking at going to, you know, definitely. Um, I'm sure we, It'll be something that you've come across before, you know, buddy. I've, I've, I've even gone to interviews myself in the past where they've given me additional information and you think to yourself, okay, well, 
even if they now offer me the position, I, I, I now don't feel as though this is right for me. This isn't the position for me, uh, yeah. what, 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 whatever it might be, you know. I oh, was that the captain getting in? Morning, Leon. Morning, dude. Morning, yeah. Oh, morning. Give, 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 <laughs> give him a good morning from me, buddy. I forget everybody can in here, yeah. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, definitely. Um, again, you know, it, it might even be, you've you've mentioned before, um, people that you've had turn up for. Um, yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, uh, sorry. So, roles and casting and stuff like that i know you mentioned that guy that was before you know who turned up for casting who uh, immediately you, you just sort of knew that he oh, wasn't going to yeah. be right for the role and it, it, it kind of goes both ways as well you know but you you will get to fail pretty pretty quickly whether something is right or wrong for the situation just yeah, like I mean, daniel did when when a guy turned up for casting and uh, started trying to rewrite the script <laughs> yeah you yeah, know yeah, yeah. there's always <laughs> stuff like that bro like um just immediately knew that he wasn't like right for the part and it, it's because it's because that you're on the other side of the um you know table then effectively right because usually if, of course like, yeah i mean obviously generally speaking if, if, if i'm interviewed like going to an interview then yeah. uh you know that's what i'm trying to please them and i want to get the job obviously but mm-hmm. that when i was you know if you cast them for a short film then it's basically that's that you're that person um you know get to say yes or no and uh mm-hmm. it, it is interesting and basically this is what I've heard is a common thread as well, right? Like that experience is important, but I honestly think like just from, from my own, well, from, you know, cause it was me, the director, the producer, the, the whole crew yeah. in there really, but yeah. we were making the like kind of, you know, executive decisions, like not to be like, sounds like pedantic, but like, um, it, it basically what the, there was a guy who had more experience, um, and you know, he was nice, but, obviously what we're looking for is something that's going to fill the role so like and and i mean you can apply this to uh jobs as well effectively right so it's like that there's so many factors that you need to consider so what we were looking for in that instance was someone who's going to fit the role of the character perfectly so Mm -hmm. if that's Mm -hmm. someone who's got more if someone has more experience but they're not necessarily fitting the character we're not necessarily going to go with that person and just to you know translate that into like a normal like working kind of in, like an interview for a job uh, i feel like that's so important is the chemistry with the the, the, the interviewer um mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you know you've got to think that the interviewer is thinking how are they going to fit into the working environment uh, mm-hmm. and, and if you've got a team right so like for example like us rob um i like i don't know uh like i know that when i got the job that like dan was thinking um and i'm sure you probably yourself as well obviously like how it's going to fit into the harmony of the group because obviously when, you, when you're in a small company i'm sure there's the you know there's plenty of people who've got perf like a lot of like good qualifications who maybe want to be a part of the team but they may not fit the the environment and if mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know someone's coming to work in that group who like wouldn't have chemistry with any of the colleagues you know it's yeah. going to affect yeah. the, the the it's going to affect everybody you know ultimately mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i think that uh that's actually so important as well. So although qualifications are important, obviously, um, they're not everything, I don't think. I think there's, there's a yeah. lot of other yeah. factors that, that, that people consider as well beside that. Definitely, definitely. A lot of personal skills and just personal qualities as well. Like you say, buddy, when it comes to working as a team, obviously you need, you, you need that chemistry, you need like a little bit of unity and a little bit of harmony as well, you know? So like like i say sometimes sometimes you'll be in the position where you're making that choice sometimes the the recruiter or the employer will be in the position where we're making that choice um have you ever gone to um because i know you do like the video editing and stuff like that as well have you ever gone to uh, have you ever done like a consultation for a project or something and just outright decided that that project wasn't for you and just said look i appreciate the time i appreciate the offer but i don't feel as though it might not even necessarily be this isn't in my wheelhouse this isn't necessarily my strengths but i don't see your vision of the project or anything like that you know because i've had clients come to me and said look can i have pt and i've pointed them in the direction of other pts just saying i don't think this right right here is going to be the best fit possible you know honestly man i would say that that's probably one of the mo- one of the most valuable lessons i've learned dude is, is is being able to kind of be frank about what your skills are and what your skills aren't so i think that like in the past i remember when i was in college so we're talking like way back when right we had a project for a client and he said um that he, what he wanted was like he was like an mma guy and he wanted like an advert for like his uh, clothing brand it was like an mma clothing brand i mean it's like totally my wheelhouse you know that i love like combat sports mm-hmm. 
in, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like all over it, and it was working with like it was going to be working with like some pretty big UK like names, and this was just in college, so I was like it was an insane opportunity. But <laughs> the problem was it, it, it totally went to to um, you know went sour because right he said that he wanted effectively two projects, but this wasn't the initial brief, and one of them was an right. advert that was going to be a showcase of the like you know of the of the t-shirt and it was going to be footage of the of the athlete training and it was going to be mm -hmm. something that i could do as if like a videographer would be to be able to like create a cinematic advert for him and that's absolutely no problem but he also wanted something that was going to be basically like a motion graphics project and it was going to be okay. text it was going to be animation and it was going to kind of have text coming on the screen animating the shirt the shirt was going to revolve around and like that, like is something that's just completely different to what I do. It's like a total different thing. Like motion graphics, mm -hmm. you know, it, you know, it's a sm like I could do a small part of that. I can create like generate like titles, and I can do like okay. texts, lower thirds titles coming on. But like when you get into motion graphics, completely different discipline. So it's like basically, I, I said yes, I can do it. Yeah, a, a completely different yeah. skill even. But like, I, I, yeah. I, and then I, w I totally wish I didn't because he said he wanted that project done first and I couldn't deliver on it. And then obviously because I couldn't deliver on that project and what I, you know, I did something that would, was less than a, you know, to a professional standard that he, yeah, yeah. then it fell out and then I, we didn't get to do the other project. So it's like, of course, since yeah. then, and it's honestly, mate, it's, it's something that still to this day, you need to be kind of very, um, it's always a back and forth with the clients because sometimes the, you know, they may ask for something that's beyond, what you can do and then I, but like we're very fortunate in media savvy because we can kind of cover all bases um whereas like i know whenever something is is too heavy on the graphic side that i'll refer it to hear from obviously mm -hmm. it's dependent mm -hmm. on his schedule but you know we are fortunately yeah. able to kind of accommodate for most of those requests because we do have like that dynamic here where we've got like lisa as yeah. a designer then we've got like hear from as a, as, a, as, a, as a motion graphics and stuff like that so it, it you know it will usually it works out now but but still it's like it can be um a bit because because obviously you got to think as well that if a client is not from this world sometimes you know they have no like kind of um you know point of reference for what is going to be like how long something's going to take or or, or or what kind of a project it is and you know yeah yeah, yeah. So, like hands down i wouldn't i wouldn't so, know yeah. if i came to you with a job and, and like and like like a vision in my mind i wouldn't know how many different almost sort of areas that requires do you know what i mean like mm -hmm. Like you say, like the editing and then the graphic side and, and, and then obviously like the motion graphics and stuff like that. Like like you say, somebody not in that field, you don't even understand all the terminology, never mind the fact that like how much actually goes into it, you know? So like like you say, it it, it, it sort of puts you in, in a position where, like you say, you've got to, it, it really does pay to just be a little bit honest with yourself totally. as well, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, we, that, could, that, that project could, I mean, uh, you know, I'm happy now with everything, but like obviously back then that project could have been lucrative, obviously, you know what I mean? If I just said, if I yeah. just literally said to him, like, I can't yeah. do that, we're not yeah. able to I can't do, do that, that one, but we get can somebody do else in. Yeah. And, and we'll that's it. Yeah. So I think that that definitely goes a long way, you know? Don't undersell yourself, but at the same time, you know, don't try and say you can do something that you can't, so... Absolutely, and that is where the self uh, self reflection skills that we talked about last week yeah. um, come comes in really handy. But reflecting on, on on like I say on yourself, but also on the specific position that you've looked at as well, and just how well do those two things pair up? Um, which is of course what we've been working through in our workbooks as well. So last week we should have got that uh, last workbook finished up. Pretty much all the research we've been doing into the vocational posts and stuff like that. So we're going to move on to the uh, to the next unit today. So if we can go on to the uh, the next slide, please, dude. So we're going to be looking at, um, like I sort of mentioned earlier on, fitness kit, uh, how to use it safely, how to make sure that we're keeping, um, like I say, ourselves and everyone around us safely. But just how to know what, well, like sort of what to use, when to use it, uh, and like I say, how how to use it right as well. Um, we're also going to be doing, and I mentioned at, at, at the start of the course, you guys are going to be um, developing and designing your own circuit. So um, once once we've sort of had, had a bit of a natter about, um, obviously, the benefits of circuit training, what it looks like, um, all of that sort of thing, you guys are going to do not only your own circuit, but you're going to um, design your own circuit cards, which we looked at briefly last week as well. So um, if you've ever been to a fitness class, 
if you've ever done circuits, you might have gone there uh, in like a community center or the sports hall or whatever it is. There might be a few different stations laid out. And you might have even seen on each of these stations, there's almost like a, like an A4 card or a piece of paper that will tell you um, what number in the circuit that station is, what the exercise is called, how to do it, what kit you should be using. Maybe it's like an, even a little image just showing this, your start point and your end point, you know. Um, and like I say, loads and loads of different information. Um, maybe it's what muscles you're going to be using. And, and it, it can help keep everything running a lot more smoothly, a lot more organized, uh, and just give you an idea of just, it's just one idea of like a resource, a tool, a material that we can use in our job or in that role that just makes it so much easier. You know, you, you, you of course have, have stuff within your own vocation as well, but you know, stuff that just helps make the job a little bit easier, you know, that, that, that you end up going back to, uh, you know, crib sheets, uh, crib sheets, stuff like that, you know, but there's always stuff that you, that, that, that you, that you can use to make things a little bit easier. And as a, and as a fitness instructor, having been in that position, you know, it just saves you a lot of chaos. If you've got everybody that knows what station they should be on, what exercise they should be doing. And even better if they know where they should be feeling and where it should be hurting. Cause then they know if they're feeling it somewhere else, they're potentially doing it wrong and, 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 and their form could need looking at. And then they can say to you, Rob, can you come over and give us a hand? Whereas if you get 10 people all get to their station and not know what they're doing, you're then trying to tell 10 people what to do all at the same time, 10 different exercises, you know, and potentially either pausing, pausing the timer and giving people more rest time while you, you get round to them or, you know, they're spending 20, 30 seconds of their 60 seconds re uh, working time just stood waiting for you to get to them, you know, and they're actually missing out on, on, on games really, you know, on, on, on progress, on results because they've turned, they've come to, to, to graft and, you know, um, they're not entirely sure what they should be doing. So I would always spend time. If you've, if you've seen any of the videos that we've got up on the media savvy channel, I always spend time before each session, like before I press the timer and say, go, I want people to know what it is that they want to be doing. Cause I want them to hit the ground running. I don't want to yeah. press go. And then you go, right. What's the plan now? What do we do? And the clock's already ticking. Uh, recently my mom got like a personal trainer, right? And, uh, she, okay. she stopped going to see her because she was saying that, uh, it's so I, I said to her, I was like, mom, like, like, come on. Like, but she said, like, uh, she, she started seeing this personal trainer and she said that, uh, she got to do all these weights. Cause my mom said to the personal trainer, she was like, I want to tone up. Right. I want to tone. So obviously the personal trainer has been like, yeah, well, this is going to help, you know, kind of build some muscle yeah. and like shape some muscle. So we're going to do mm -hmm. some like weight exercises. And my mom stopped going. Cause she said, well, I didn't want to do that kind of stuff. I wanted to do what my friend was doing because my friend went to the same personal trainer but her friend said to the personal trainer that she wanted to lose weight so right the personal Two trainer gave goals. her some cardio exercises and then yeah. so that's funny yeah. and i said mom it's because what you said to the trainer <laughs> i was like yeah, 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 you yeah. said to the trainer that you yeah. wanted to lose weight she would have gave you exercises like your friend but yeah it, so yeah. It, i thought that was quite funny though but so it's obviously like when you're dealing with someone who it, it's like what can, what can you even do in that situation because um, if the person tells you one thing, you're obviously going to try and accommodate for that, but maybe they're not, they don't know what they actually want or they don't want. It's, yes. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. They might. Oh yeah, they, definitely. They might tell you one thing, but they actually want to do something else. If you get what I'm saying. So it's like, Oh man, I've, I've, I've had it. I've had it over <laughs> the years. I've, I've, I've had people that say to me that they, they want to get stronger, but what they really mean is to put size on yeah, yeah. or, or to just move better and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, whereas like when you say stronger and strength, my mind straight away goes to like five reps, five sets of five, heavy, heavy weights, lift them a couple of times, move on to something else. Like that's strength training. Yeah, dude. When people say strength, they don't usually mean I want to be able to deadlift 200K. I want to be able to pick up the Atlas stones and get them on yeah, top of the yeah, pedestal. Yeah. Like that's not it. It's, I like to be able to carry the shopping from the car to the house in one trip. I'll not be able to breath when I get there, that yeah, sort yeah. of thing. So, so yeah, it's, it's important to remember as, as the instructor that, other people's and, and, and the public's understanding of certain words and certain terms might not match up exactly with you. Um, what you'll probably find as well, and, and what you find with, especially in cases like, like with your mom and a friend by the sounds of it, you will probably find that they both want to do a little bit of both goals. Probably, they probably yeah. both, both do want to burn. And when they say, I want to lose weight, 
it's not I want to lose weight, it's I want to lose body fat. It's yeah. always body fat. Who wants to lose lean muscle? I've never God. met anybody who wants to lean, lean, lose lean muscle. Yeah. You want to lose body fat. That's what you're trying to lose. So is there is there scope for, yeah, your, your mom might not have as much weight to lose or feel like she's got as much weight to lose, but, you know, there's always benefit to doing cardio. I'm sure your mom's friend could probably get some benefit from not only losing the weight, but, you know, maybe toning up a little bit so there's something to oh, go sure, underneath. Yeah. So really, what they what they could think about doing, and what I, what you could even suggest to her, see if they could go and train together. If their yep. schedules line up, split the cost. They can maybe get two sessions a week instead of one, and get double benefit. And the PT, if if they sit down and just explain and say, look, um, we're both probably a little bit more working towards similar goals than we have expressed here. Yeah, you know, yeah. can we can we do a blend and, and do and do the, like a little bit of a mix of both. You know, those two things go really well together. Right, you know, yeah. G- gaining muscle and losing weight at the same time is pretty tough. You yeah. know, um, losing body fat and just having the muscle toning up underneath and getting stronger underneath in the meantime is a lot easier, yeah. you know, because you're not actually trying to grow, build anything. You don't need the surplus of calories. You don't need extra calories for muscles to tone up and get stronger necessarily. That's just to get them bigger. You know, so 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 really, um, they like I say that they might actually benefit from doing like a little bit of a mix of both, um, because you can actually burn more calories as well from the resistance training side of things as well. Yeah. You know, so is it a case of your mom doesn't want to do that stuff by herself, and can you bring a friend in as well, or is it just a case of your mom doesn't really feel like doing those things at all? In which case, she could maybe move closer towards what her friend's doing because doing something together or that they're enjoying is going to be more beneficial than doing something by themselves oh, that they're dreading or not enjoying as well. So I would, I would recommend that if they could see, no, if they could, um, idea, if they could train together, get twice the amount of sessions, uh, you know, assuming that the PT charges per hour and per, per person, that was the way I used yeah. to do it. It's like, if you want to come and train by yourself, happy days. If you want to bring your mate, happy days, you know, I mean, regardless, it's going to be the same yeah. price. So yeah, you might actually get, they might actually get more out of it that way. So again, good, you know, yeah. Yeah, that'd be something that I would mention uh, for sure. So, yeah, when it comes to um, when it comes to um, especially guidance and resistance training, you know, um, I, I find that people do need a little bit more advice and, and, like I say, guidance. Of course, you know, because you can come and you can get on a treadmill, you can press the big green button that makes it start moving, and you can just run at your own speed. You can turn it up a little bit if you're feeling like it. You can put an incline on if you want. Um, it's hard to do it wrong, isn't it? Really. Yeah. yeah. You know, in terms of like, of course, you can you can you can fall off a treadmill, you can fall off a treadmill, um, but it, it's hard to really like use the machine wrong, isn't it? Really, whereas of course, if you if if you get a kettlebell, it can go all over the place. You know what I mean? There's there's nothing really that's going to give you any indication what to use it for. If you came along a kettlebell in isolation and you'd never seen one before, there's no clear indication what it's used for, really. Yeah. You know, um, you get on a, even a resistance machine, the chest press machine, it's going to have a little picture, tells you what muscles are getting used, tells you how to do it, you know, um, so you can jump on a lot easier without asking questions, without needing to go over to someone and say, can you show us how this uses? And, and really at the end of the day, like the machine is only going to work through the range that is set by the machine itself, you know? So if you're doing a chest press, you're not going to be wobbling all over the place because the barbell can only move up and down, really, you know. So you you again, you've got a lot more, um, a lot more security that you're doing it right, uh, and 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 using it properly because the machine almost guides you, which is one of the biggest benefits of it, you know. Which again, it just shows how important having that information on a circuit card can be in a class, you know. If it works on machines in the gym, you know, the leg extension machine, how you set that up, how you use it, what muscles you use, it's just as beneficial in the circuit as well, you know, because potentially even more beneficial because you're in a position where like I say you're dealing with eight, ten, fifteen people all at once. And you know, without that information, they might all need your help at the same time. You know, so like 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 I say, being able to um just keep that organization a little bit better um can, can go a really long way at just keeping not only yourself sort of uh, organized, but keeping people focused, keeping people engaged because they can feel like they're working throughout the whole set like they should be. Um so when it comes to circuit training, um, and 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 these cards, I'm just thinking what what what's um, 
on that last slide just before we moved on to that one. So um, we had name of exercise, muscles that we're using, equipment that we use, maybe the picture of the exercise, brief description on how to carry out the exercise as well. Um, health and safety considerations is definitely something we can get, uh, get on there as well. You know, if we can say, just be aware of, you know, put the clips on either end of the bar before we start bench pressing and stuff like that, you know, so the uh, plates aren't going to be falling off. And one of the, one of the, the least um, utilised, I would say, pieces of information you can have on these um, circuit cards would be a way to make it harder if somebody's finding it too easy and a way to make it a little bit easier if, if someone is finding it hard and struggling with it. You know, it might be... Um, it might be sort of like a, a replacement for burpees if you're working with somebody who's got a bad back who can't be jumping in and out and stuff like that. Maybe they haven't got the core strength to, to land in that plank position before sort of jumping back in, you know? So having a way of saying to them, uh, right, let's just do do star jumps, you know? They don't have to spend 10, 15, 20 seconds saying to you, Rob, I can't do this, my back hurts. Like, what can I do instead? You know, when you're down there dealing with somebody who's deadlifting, you're trying to watch their form and make sure they don't hurt themselves, you know? Um, it's it, it it is. It just keeps everything a little bit more organised. It keeps it flowing a little bit more. And, and like I say, people can get to the station. If you get there during your twenty seconds rest time, and you spend five seconds reading what it is what you've got to do, you can have a good fifteen seconds or whatever it is just to get some deep breaths in. You know, just extra recovery. You know, rather than getting there and you're spending the whole time like, oh, what what kit am I meant to be using? It says I need a skipping rope, but there's no skipping rope here. Like, what 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 should I be doing? What, what what do I need to be using? The end of the day, like, one of the benefits of circuit training, which is something that we're going to get uh, get onto in, in 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 just a second, really, is that how quick and effective it can be. You know, if you're going to the gym and you're doing like a big lift and you're waiting five minutes between each set, so you're fresh and ready to go and lift heavy again on your next set you can easily end up at the gym for an hour and a half two hours like like easily whereas like for some people depending on goals again you know would they be better off keeping their rest time low keeping their heart rate high and burning more calories throughout the session and just keeping that session a lot shorter so you're actually saving yourself a load of time as well you could get a whole session in in half an hour 40 minutes and and, and, and be home again you know which might actually be the difference between having time to exercise and not having time to exercise, um, which is, you know, as we've talked about, what, normally one of the biggest barriers that we come across, you know, certainly pre-COVID, you know, uh, before gyms were closed and, and it was hard to even get hold of kit and um, go to exercise, uh, go to um, fitness classes and stuff like that. The biggest issue that I used to come across really was, was probably time you know, um, or the perception that they don't have enough time, whereas really it was just a case of exercise fell on the priority list under binging that new season on Netflix, you know? So they had time. It was just a case of what they were doing with that time. But in that mind, it's a case of, okay, I haven't got time to exercise. So yeah. that's where we work at, at, on removing them barriers. And that's where I've suggested over the years, you know, Come, come to this circuit class, come and PT with me and we'll just do some circuits. And rather than coming to the gym four nights a week for an hour and a half, you can come to the gym for three nights a week for, for 40 minutes. And you're going to get as much benefit because it's going to be so much more structured and so much more focused. Um, and, and, and like I say, for a lot of people in the gym, I would say that a good 80% of people in the gym in some way would like to lose some level of body fat and reduce that level of body fat. And one of the best ways you can do that is by just cutting your rest down. You know, you can you can say to yourself, like, right, I'm going to, rather than rest in two minutes and getting my breath back, I'm going to rest for 20 seconds, and then I'm going to get back in there. And your heart rate doesn't have time to come down, and then you're still burning more calories. You know, so like, like I say, rather than stopping and recovering, just keep going, just keep going. That's why then 10 exercise circuits works really well because you can be working for 10 minutes really before you stop for, for longer than 10, 20 seconds. You know, if you've ever done um, like an insanity class, no, uh, no. a high intensity training class, um, a metafit class, some of them you only get like 10 seconds rest really, you know, and then you're on to the next thing and, and it just it doesn't give your body much time to recover at all. But um, it's so good for your cardiovascular fitness and your recovery, you know, because your recovery gets better at sort of doing what it needs to do in those in that time because um, it's got no choice, you know, that's, that is that is the way that it's training. So again, you know, circuit training, one, one of the massive benefits, we can, we can um, cut down a load of time, 
and we can potentially free ourselves up some time elsewhere in the week, you know. Yeah. And one of the ways I used to pitch um, PT to people, because uh, I, I never thought of it, although I'm walking up on the gym floor to people and saying, look, let us help you out, come and PT with me. I never really thought of it as sales because I always thought of it as like, I am just trying to offer somebody a little bit of guidance. I would rather they listened and took that advice under like, un, like under their belt rather than like much more than just coming and doing PT with me and just going through the motions. That's not what I want. I want people to make progress. Um, so the way that I used to say it to people was, look, if, if time is an issue and getting to the gym is an issue or you've got other commitments and stuff like that, I, I would say like, rather than thinking of buying yourself some PT and treating yourself to some PT, yeah, it's almost like buying yourself a couple of nights off. Do you know what I mean? Like, where if you can come to the gym three nights a week after work rather than five, two nights a week now you get to come in and put your feet up and, and chill, you know, or, or, or see the kids or pick them up from school or take them to dance or football or whatever it might be and, and be part of those activities a little bit more, you know? So you're actually buying yourself a little bit of freedom, yeah. you know? And, and that's not even just from investing in PT. You can go away and just pick some people's brain, do your own bit of research, investing in yourself, and, and learning the information will just massively help you cut down on the time that you're spending in the gym because you're just going to be so much more focused, um, which is, of course, where, where, where we come in and where I come in and, and, and helping you guys figure out the best way to get from point A to point B. Um, right, guys, so just because um, Daniel's just peeled off there for a second, I've noticed he's got up on screen uh, our word jumble that we're going to do this morning. So we've got um, 12 different pieces of fitness kit. Um and they're all jumbled up. So what I want you guys to do, um, like say either at home, um, pause it if you want, and you can catch up after. Um, like I say, or if you're working through in your own time, then just take a few minutes. Um, but yeah, grab a, grab a pen and a piece of paper, uh, and we're just gonna work your way down and see which of those pieces of fitness kit you can uh, you can pick out of there. Um, and then we'll have a few minutes, and then I'll work through them, and we'll, like I say, we'll get a, a good look in there, what they look like, and, and how we can actually use them as well so um yeah just just have five minutes or so on on, on this guys uh and and and, and see how we get on and we'll go from there uh okay guys so just catching up on the chat uh okay so uh, that that's just updated for me there i've just seen that um of course wib's in as well morning wib nice to have you in buddy um this heat has been yeah this heat has been torture this week uh, just, just catching up on a couple of comments there I said, like I said, even last week, I can't believe how long this has gone on for now. I can't remember the last time we had like a couple of a couple of weeks solid, like good weather, warm weather. But it is affecting sleep. It's affecting my sleep. I know full well that it, 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 it's obviously affecting um, Alex, my partner's sleep, uh, and of course, um, well, of, our, of our learners, a couple of people that we work with have mentioned again. You know, we're getting um, we're getting a lot of. Um, People saying that they're struggling to stay asleep during the night. They're struggling to uh, wake, waking up on the morning, waking up on the morning, and um, uh, waking up in the morning and struggling to get back off to sleep as well. You know, and um, so we've talked about in our in our fit body fit mind. Um, so again, if you want to go check that out, that's up on the channel as well. Talking about the importance sorry, sorry. of sleep. A little bit noisy, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no worries. It was a. Uh, I thought we had a guest speaker in that. I didn't know about for a second there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, quality. Man, I was like, oh, dude, like, sorry. <laughs> uh, no worries, man. No worries. It keeps me on my toes as well, doesn't it? It, 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 it keeps it keeps me working. Um. So we were just talking, buddy. Um. Pretty much. Um. So so um. The guys are doing the jumble. The guys are just working through the jumble that we've got on screen, trying to work out those little different bits of um fitness kit and uh, we've just been talking about the heat do you know what i mean i've seen that a couple of the guys in the in the comments have said that the heat's throwing the sleep off this week as well you know and, and, and just just being sort of quite quite over overpowering uh you know how, how so are you in the heat buddy i know i know you like the sun and it sort of motivates yeah. and it, it fills you with energy but there's there's warm and, and there's there's too warm for what we're trying to do and trying to sleep isn't there it's because like we don't have any like uh, air conditioning here or anything like that, so it's like uh, it's just so hot on a night. But we don't really have like the right stuff in place to, to deal with it because we don't usually have this that um, like hot weather that much. So it's uh yeah, it can be a bit rough. I mean, obviously, I think like optimal temperature for when you're sleeping is like a quite a little like, quite cool. It so is when, when yeah. it's too yeah. hot. 
it's uh it can be pretty uncomfortable definitely i can i can i can 100 percent think that like yeah and it's like yeah you, you, you're rolling around you can't get you can't get comfortable yes it's not it's not very nice at all and we we talked ourselves on the uh, the fit body fit mind that we did the other week. Of course, we looked at the uh, the importance of sleep, how it links in with our physical and our mental health as well. So, um, definitely go check that out if that's something that interests you. Uh, because like like we say that that that's, that sleep really really does link in with everything else that's going on as well. And like we did, like we said the other week, it has a knock on effect as well, doesn't it? You have one day where you don't get enough sleep, and it's like oh I haven't got this done, and then you have another day where you haven't got enough sleep, and it just compounds, doesn't it? It just builds up. And builds up yeah. and you have a full, full week like that you get to the end of the week absolutely wrecked what's the chances that by friday you're sticking to your diet plan because you're tired and you're sticking to your exercise plan because you're tired you know it's 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 almost the foundation for um those eight or so hours that we should be asleep sets us up for the 16 hours that we're going to be awake and our chances of actually sticking with what we need to be doing and, and, and making progress because i can tell you exactly how um motivated and I feel if I've had a four hour sleep night, do you know what I mean? Or, or how, uh, do, 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 do you know what I mean? Like how, uh, how, how, how driven I feel when I wake up after a shocking night's sleep um, or a couple of shocking night's sleep. So we're making sure that we get as good a sleep as possible. Of course, at the minute we can, um, we're relying quite heavily on like a, a like a, a bedroom fan having the windows open, leaving the bedroom door open for ventilation and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, it was Alex's yeah. birthday yesterday and, and we've gotten uh, my mum and dad got a hair. Have you heard of them? It's, it's called a chillo. It's almost like okay. a gel mat. It's a gel mat that goes inside your pillow or under your mattress if you get the full size one. And I, I, I don't know the science behind it. It's almost like magic. It just helps dissipate body heat. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. And it just, it just absorbs it. It absorbs it. It's that feeling of like when you... You know when you flip the pillow over and it's cold on the other side. Oh yeah, what? Which absolute bliss when you wake it's up and feel like I'm a, I'm a morning like that. Every part of your pillow feels like that because obviously the bit that you're on might get warm eventually. You move mm-hmm. to somewhere else and it just starts absorbing heat again. Uh, she said that she uh, last night she said she had the best best sleep, um, the best sleep that she's had in a while actually. So they're they're quite cost effective. Again, how's, this, how's this it, is one that it, How's it work? Like what's the crap? Like what's the like like how? Sure, it works? Wait, I, there's some kind of gel. I don't know exactly what the gel is that fills it. Right. You put but it under your gel, pillow or in your you put it like pillowcase in your in your, in your pillowcase on right. top, okay. or um, you get the full body ones that go under your um, under your obviously under your sheet, and it just sort of um, like I say, touching and putting pressure on it um, starts to somehow absorb body heat and, and, and draw it out and, and help cool you down as well so like i say this is just one that almost slits in uh, slots into your pillowcase i think it came with its own sleeve actually and um, that you could use just separately if you wanted to but um yeah uh, really really handy and and like i say quite cost effective as well you can get sorry different ones that you might um if you've ever seen like the old school ones a few years ago when i first came across them you would put in the fridge or in the freezer and let them cool and chill and then put them in your in your pillow and they've yeah, advanced yeah, that yeah, much yeah. now that you don't even need to do that you just leave them on the bed all the time and yeah they, they work to help um like i said just draw out that body heat and, and just and just disperse it and, and like i say how just help help you keep a little bit cooler which this time of year is an absolute godsend i'm uh, I'm, I'm quite jealous actually i might have to get myself one we'll be awesome, fighting man. for it I might try, I might yeah yeah now. definitely um i'm gonna bear with us two seconds guys and while i'm on I'll have a look and see how much they're sort of going for. Um, Because like I say, if if sleeping is something that you struggle with, it could be a game changer, really. You know, like like I say, we've talked at at length the um, benefits of a good night's sleep. You know, so something that's going to help you sleep might actually be more beneficial than going out and getting a kettlebell or a protein powder or or, or something. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, exactly. Sleep quality Um, everything. Yeah, so... um, just trying to have a look there. There's literally one there. I don't know how well you guys can see that for like a tenner. Oh, okay. I can see that, bro. Yeah. So, so that one obviously sits like on top of your pillow, but that might just be again for, for the sake, for the, for the purposes of the picture, you know, um, there you go. Just sort of slots into the old, into the old pillar case like that. And, um, like I say, really, really helpful. Um, and of course, we've had to get the dog one as well. If Alex has got one, the dog's gonna have one. Um, the, awesome. You can get like you get one specifically for dogs. Again, if it's a That's hot so day, cool. like it has been, and with us with us having a, a, a like a black puppy um, who just wants to run around in the heat, mm-hmm. he hasn't got any any concept of overheating. Um, yeah, it's 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 really handy. So, 
if you're struggling with the heat, that's something you could look at, of course, because you don't just have to use it in bed. You could use it throughout the day, stick it on the chair if you wanted, you know. So, so yeah, definitely, um, that, that that could that could really help, um, just just with that sleeping quality for sure. Um, I've just seen. Um, Gary says he's got all twelve. So, um, let's start having to work through these uh, these answers that we've got on the screen then. Eh? So, oh, nice. um, so. I think you were aware when when we when we just looked at this for the for the first couple of seconds, buddy. So yeah, we've got our different bits of fitness kit, and we're just breaking down what we've got there. So uh, the first one that we've got is a it's a skipping rope. So skipping rope really really good for sort of cardiovascular fitness. If you've ever seen it, like the the, the boxers do so much skipping. Um, I can only vouch for that because I've, I've I've worked in boxing gyms and seen how much training goes into it. Daniel, you could probably tell us whether it's just as prevalent in stuff like your UFC, your MMA, that sort of thing. You know, in terms, so, yeah. of in terms of your conditioning, it's it it could be so helpful. Oh, um, definitely, it's like yeah. Say, just your CV system working. I think that uh, yeah. insane exercise. Yeah, it's uh, it's really underrated as well. I think that uh, obviously in like boxing and stuff people know how good it is but i think as a form of exercise like it can be really really good for you you know like because i think yeah. people's like at home you know like home workout people's go-to thing is like for a run right i'm gonna go for a run and i mean obviously mm-hmm. that makes sense in terms of like going out and you know enjoying yeah. the, the sun or whatever and, and, and seeing a bit of scenery but like just a skipping rope at home can be like a super good workout you know yeah so. yeah Pro- providing that you're in a position where you should be jumping or you're going to be okay with jumping or yeah, any yeah. form of impact. Um, yeah, impact right. Skipping rope could be amazing. You know, that's not, that's not to say that they're for absolutely everybody. I've had people before that for, for whatever reason, it could even be just bad back. You know, they don't want to be jumping and that impact every single time. I'm like, well, just, just bend your knees. Don't get up off the floor, but put your arms out and just pretend that you've got a skipping rope. It's exactly the same movement. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. like, if you've ever done that thing where you stand with your arms out and just do little circles, how long do you do that before they start to get tired? Oh, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You, you might you might get thirty seconds and it starts to kick in. You do that for a couple of minutes and you're really going to know about it. Uh, and like I say, yeah, your heart rate comes up, your cardiovascular system is working so much more efficient for just getting the blood around your body. Because we've talked before as well. If you're in a combat sport and your your conditioning's gone and you're gassed, you're a sitting target really, and if you can't move your feet and get out the way and 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 sort of out out maneuver your opponent. Um, you, you you're gonna end up taking taking a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of abuse coming your way, pretty much, aren't you? You know, set you at a really a, a real dis- disadvantage. So being able to move your feet and just stay mobile, um, really at the end of the day, it comes down to your cardiovascular system and, and and how long that can keep up. And a skipping rope, especially in those sports, can be can be really really good. But like Daniel mentioned, it, it could be a really cost effective bit of kit as well, just to have at home. You know, if you if you think I want to do something, I haven't got time to go for a full walk, or the weather's not yeah. very nice, um, I'm just gonna make a make, make use of like a couple like a gap in in between showers and rain and stuff like that. I want to do, you could do it in the house. You know, yeah. depending on how high your ceilings are and what space you've got and stuff like that, you could even do it in the house. You know, so again, you could you could get a skipping rope for a fiver. You know what I mean? And that's that's probably quite quite high end as well. You know, depending if you just want a basic one. Um, I think I actually got um like a double pack. That was a fiver just to use with clients and take out and about when when I was going from house to house and doing home visits. Yeah. I didn't want to be carrying kettlebells and dumbbells and stuff like that. I was resistance bands. I was like I say, um, all of that sort of thing. Skipping ropes, just easy stuff to, to use that you can use in a lot of different ways when it comes to your fitness. Um, and and like I say, s- skipping can be a really good form of fitness as well. Uh, okay, so we've got uh, number two. Uh, we had a medicine ball, so it might be something that you've come across before. It is essentially just, just it, they, they look like a beach ball pretty much, or a football, or, a, or, or any form of ball really, uh, and they'll have a number on the side that's that's going to denote how um, how heavy they are. You know, so it might be six kilograms, eight kilograms, however heavy it is. So you can actually help um, pick the right sort of weight for wherever it is that you're going to do. You know, if you were doing say um, a medicine ball slam with them and slamming them onto the floor as hard as you can for that cardiovascular explosive sort of effect yeah, yeah. you know you're going to pick a totally different weight to if you're doing um russian twists you know sitting on your bum with a weight in each hand and twisting side to side you know you're, pro- you're probably not going to want as heavy a weight to do that so being able to pick the right bit uh, or, or the right weight can be can be really helpful as well um medicine balls actually got actually got their name from um a doctor or a physician that started using exercise and these in particular to address depression and depressive symptoms and and, 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 and poor mental health and stuff like that. 
um, which is where they got the name Medicine Ball, and it's just stuck ever since. You know, um, they've, I'd say they've become more popular in the last ten years. You know, in terms of that functional training, but I think functional training itself has become a lot more popular over the last ten years. Yeah. Doing stuff that that translates really well to day to day life. You know, we're pushing a sled, we're pulling whatever, we're flipping tires, we're, you know, what I mean, Ham, like hammer strikes on the tire and stuff like that. Like that's the sort of thing. Um, it's really, really come on leaps and bounds. It's it's almost CrossFit without being strictly crossfit isn't it you know yeah. um that, 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 that like i say those big sort of functional movements and stuff like that and medicine balls lend themselves towards that a lot better than um a barbell or a dumbbell which is going to be very sort of um restrictive in, in the in the range that you're going to be working through with with those bits of kit um not that they don't have their place as well uh, okay so number three was trampoline trampolines I find it's the same as with skipping ropes. You give somebody one of those two things, and the first thing they say is, "Yeah, hey, I haven't done this since I was at school." <laughs> you know, a, tra- a, tra- a trampoline and a skipping rope. Yeah, and you know, right. I, th- I think I think the part of that actually ties into people's willingness to go and just use these bits of kit as fitness. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've, I've not seen, like you like you mentioned a second ago, buddy, in those circles and those communities around um, those combat sports mm. where they understand the value of skipping and that cardiovascular fitness. Like you said earlier on, Joe Public probably isn't going to come into the gym and pick up a skipping rope and just start right away they go. If they haven't done it in 20 years, do you know what I mean? Like, that's not going to be their goal. That's not going to be your go-to thing. Exactly. You know? So, so I, 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 again, having or being familiar with as many different bits of kit as possible, it not only improves, obviously, your ability to use them, but your confidence going in and using these things as well, you know? Um, you, it's a, it's one thing understanding how to use them, but being confident enough in your understanding to go and actually do it in a gym full of potentially full of people, you know, where where, where you're getting or you you're gonna probably feel or perceive as though people are watching and they might feel like people are judging what you're doing it's not going to be the case but of course you're going to be aware of how well you understand how to use this how confident you feel with this before you go in and try you know which is why skipping ropes trampolines um trampolines themselves are, are, are amazing for fitness like um you, you probably don't realize so much as a kid when you've got energy for days and days and days but i tell you what you go and jump on one now and, and, you'll, and you'll know about it i actually um got got brought into um, a company that had, had a whole trampoline park put in pretty much. And they had this almost like a grid of like five by five small one person trampolines. And they said, we wow. want to run fitness. We want to run, fitness. we want to run fitness classes on here. Will you come and have a look and see um, what sort of stuff we can do? So I came in, had a look at the space and I, and I said like, okay, we can do pretty much whatever we want with this space. Do you know what I mean? Like I, 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 I the way I used to do it would, I would map it out like a snake, so they'd go up one side, down the other, up again, down again, back on themselves, and I would have just, just a different exercise on each trampoline. So you might do sort of like squats at like one at, at, at one station, and the next one you might be doing jumping jacks. Whereas jumping jacks, yeah, then maybe it's a little bit easier on a trampoline. You're getting a little bit more airtime. You can get a bit more movement. Squats, however harder on a trampoline i would say because oh, yeah yeah surface underneath is trying to move it's not just a case of getting down low and getting your own body weight back up you've got to stay balanced as well yeah, like yeah, it it, yeah. it adds a different element to the exercise that you just can't get away from a trampoline really those angles working to stabilize your knees working to stabilize and your hips stabilizing you as well you don't get that um so much when you're working on a solid floor as well yeah yeah you, know? you see uh people do squats on those um it was kind of, it's like half a, half a kind of, like a ball maybe. And on the yes, floor, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you see people do squats on those. I can't remember what those are called. It's like it's half, a um, Bosu ball. That's it. Yeah. Um, you, you see, uh, ball. People, people do squats on them, but and uh, that's obviously um, you can see that you're having to stabilize to keep yourself straight. Yeah. That was, that was that's the one. one. That's it. Yeah. That's the one. There. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's essentially um, half of a, um, one of the big Swiss balls, isn't it? That you'll that's see it. people like yeah, yeah, passing yeah. from their hands to their feet, stuff like that. So um, your Swiss ball is, um, I don't know if I've got them on the days where PowerPoint actually. Um, so that would be sort of like your Swiss ball. You might see people doing like sit ups over them and stuff like yeah, that because yeah. it's good for the shape of your back. And then like a Bosu ball, like Daniel says, where you can really, really utilize them for balancing. Um, and, and, and like I say, work on those stabilizing muscles because it just simulates the floor moving under your feet, which is where, yeah, you do have to work a lot harder, you know. Um, certain things like that that I'd have thought 
were going to be just as just as sort of manageable as doing them body weight on flat on terra firma. Do you know what I mean? Like on the uh, on on like a, a solid surface, just proved to be so much harder on a trampoline than even, than even I thought they were going to be. To be honest, yeah. You know, so it t- turned out to be really really good, um, really good fitness class in terms of the cardiovascular effect, but also um, toning up as well toning up because like i say there was so much they could do not just tuck jumps and star jumps and stuff like that um like i say we would be down doing um sort of like press ups and burpees and stuff like that and like say some of it's much harder on a trampoline oh, um, mel mel used to actually teach a class called um uh, boogie bounce that was all just trampolines and it was them little trampolines that have got like almost like a handlebar on the front that you can get a hold of um i'm going to see if i can find a one man trampoline yeah, fitness class, and you just get a hold of the um, yeah, you would just get a hold of like the uh, the, like the bar uh, at the front. Bear with us, guys. Bear with us, guys. <laughs> These loading page not found. Beautiful, beautiful <laughs> images. There we go. So you might get um something like this. Um, there you go. Where there's almost there's a little handle on the front for you to get hold of to keep you stabilized a little bit more. Cookies, yeah. So again, you can um, you you can get hold of that barbell, and you can do you can do all sorts uh, or, or that or that bar on the front. Um, and there is loads of different bits of, uh, fitness you can do. I mean, you can come off to the side, and you can do dips, you know, off off the side of the trampoline as well. And then of course, being on the trampoline does make a lot of stuff um a lot harder. Uh, okay, uh, number four, we had uh, an exercise mat, which it doesn't necessarily let you do a lot of different exercise. But it's it's definitely going to keep you safer and more comfortable during exercise. I mean, if you've done um, even yoga without a yoga mat, you know, um, you're getting yourself into some positions. You're on your tailbone, you're on your knees, you know, your maybe on your elbows. Um, it helps to have that little bit of ex- extra padding as well. You know, when it when it comes to work and like putting something between you and the floor before you're down for planking or or sit ups or leg raises or whatever it, it, it might be. So stretching as well you know stretching yoga it's not just about getting down and doing your press-ups and you know having something to protect your knees as yeah. um it can just help you keep a lot more a lot more comfortable while you're doing your stretching and make them a lot more bearable you know i would say probably increasing the chances of you actually doing your stretches you know if um because that's the one thing that we're first to sort of uh, neglect it's like oh i'm getting there five minutes late um I know I'll just not I'll not, I'll not do me warm up I'll not do me stretches at the end and of course flexibility and being able to move is 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 massively important you know um so we do need to make sure that we're getting those stretches in as well so an exercise mat it just makes things a little bit more comfortable while you're doing stuff that's going to be uh, down on the floor uh, okay number five is a, a battle rope which we're going to get a look at in just a second if you haven't uh, ever seen one of them before so a battle rope is essentially a big old piece of rope. Um, usually heavier than it looks and it's going to be normally anchored around something so it might be like um, it might be anchored around another machine in the gym we've uh, we used to anchor them around the squat rack because you know the squat rack's not going anywhere um, yeah. another gym we used to use we just used to have this big sort of pillar at the entrance to the gym that we used to sort of um, loop it round uh, and, and and yeah the, the, the rope itself the weight of the rope is is, is what's going to give you the resistance and you might do slams where you pick up both ends of the rope as hard as you can and slam it down you might have one end in each hand and you might do like really really fast sort of shakes bringing your arms up and down getting your shoulders working uh, and again it's one of them where the first 10 seconds or so you think ah this is all right and then that slow burn starts to kick in the heart rate comes up because your body's trying to um, get blood to where it needs to deliver the oxygen to as well. Um, so so battle ropes, again, there's a lot of different stuff you can do with them, um, which we'll talk about a little bit more uh, in a second when we get a look at them so we can visualise that a little bit more. Um, so number five was a battle rope. Number six, unfortunately, is not scone. I wish a, <laughs> I wish a scone was a piece of fitness kit. It's not. That, that, that is cones. Um, again, I've used them quite a lot as, um, as, as markers, either to set out an area for tyre flips, you yeah. know, just to make sure that nobody else runs into that area. It's like, right, if you're not the one doing tire flips, stay out of there. You know, there might be a sledgehammer being swung around to, to hit the tire with, stuff like that. It makes sure that people are not going in, into that area that shouldn't be. Um, I've used them for um, what I used to call like um, suicide shuttles or suicide sprints where you would like, you'd have a start cone and then like 
further away, you might have like cone one, cone two, cone three, cone four. So they might run from the stack cone out to cone one and back, then cone two and back, three and back, four and back. So it, it, they can just help you mark out um, different areas and, and like I say, different po different points where you want people to be. Um, I even used to use them to mark out different stations in my circuit. You know, rather than rather than just put down my circuit card, I'm like, no. When you when you see a cone, there is something there for you to go over and do. You know, so again, it just makes it a little bit easier for people to follow what they're doing. It makes it a little bit harder for them to miss an exercise out and just throw the whole thing into in the chaos. Like, oh, I've got two exercises left to do. I've got one left to do. Oh, I'm I'm finished. You're like, okay, something's gone wrong here. People have been missing some stuff out. And I like I say, I've used cones to uh, to mark that as well. Um. One of my favorite ones to do with cones, now I think about it, I used to get people to come into a plank and put the cone sort of over to one side in level with the ribs. So you'd be in a plank and you'd have to reach across and pull this cone across your body oh, over to the other side, up hands, and then pull it across the other way. So not only are you planking, you're then lifting one hand up so you've only got three points of contact with the floor you're only stabilizing from three points and pulling this yeah cone across night nice and controlled as well which mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how much the cone weighs that's not the tasking that's not the challenging part of it it's staying stabilized just having one one hand on the floor while you're planking yeah. Yeah, you know so, so so again it's not all about the cone but it can be used as a prop um, without adding a lot of weight to an exercise that doesn't need any more weight adding, that's for sure. Um, you know, a really good place to start before I would give somebody, okay, there's a two and a half kilogram plate, do the same with a two and a half kilogram plate, you know, you build up to that. They might start with a cone. So it's a really good sort of um, entry point without adding a load of weight, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I used to do, I used to um, get people to do like, they'd hold a medicine ball into their chest. They would come down into a squat, push the medicine ball in, out, come back in and then come back out of their squat. Now, again, if the first, if it's the first time they're doing this, you don't want the medicine ball to really weigh anything. Yeah, or yeah, if yeah. they've got a bad back, you don't want them to have a 10 kilogram medicine ball out there trying to pull them forward when mm -hmm. their lower back is struggling as it is. So you can, like I say, give them that prop, just give them like a cone or something like that that is just essentially weightless and they can use it as a prop to keep themselves right without it making the exercise any harder as well. So, so cones are a little bit more versatile than you might think. Uh, and, 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 and again, if you think outside the box a little bit, there's a lot of different stuff you can do with them. Uh, number seven, uh, we had a step, you know, so you've got your proper fitness steps, which you, which you might see that have got, um, you know, they might be adjustable either end. There might be boxes that go underneath where you can adjust how high you want it. If you're doing mm -hmm. box jumps or step ups or stuff like that. Um, Back in the back in the nineties, early early noughties, it felt felt as though like stepper size was going through its uh, through 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 the, the maximum of its hype as well. You know, like yeah. these aerobics classes where you might yeah, go yeah. along and everybody's got their own step and you're just like stepping on and off to music, you know, and you're like stepping up and knee up into the air and then sort of jumping in and facing it from the other side. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with them. Jolly. You know, I remember um, even I remember when we had the Wii Fit, there was a there was a class, uh, there was an exercise class on the Wii Fit that used the board as a step and you would do essentially that you would just be on and off off to the side off out to the front stepping on backwards that sort of thing and do you know what it's 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 more beneficial than you might think as well it's a Definitely. case of yeah one one step by itself not potentially a huge ish issue if you've ever gone up like um like a block of flats or a skyscraper or something like that and you've gone up flight after flight after flight of stairs you know that the the accumulative effect and 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 how much it does take a take out here you know like i've, I've given i've gone to home PT sessions before and just had clients running up and down their own stairs because how hard it is, True. you know? And then like um you can get them to like squat jumps on and off the bottom stair. We can use that, you know. Um we can do um a lunge facing away from a step with our rear foot on the step, you know, which is going to put a little bit more emphasis on the front leg and and and, and uh, like, like on the thigh on the leading leg and the and the glute at the back as well. So um, steps again can can be used in a lot of different ways. Um, one of my favourite ones used to be getting people to do um, again doing a plank with their hands just up against the step, but not quite on it, and then staying in a plank, but getting up onto the step and then coming back down oh, from the step dude, and then back onto the step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good for shoulder strength and shoulder stability and core stability as well, which in turn. Uh, engages your lower back a little bit more and encourages your lower back to work harder. So um, again, there's, 
there's there's a lot of different stuff you can do with them. Yeah, I, I I used to enjoy doing that. Could you? I'm trying to. Yeah, I'm trying to think like if you could replicate that at home without a step, but like you could do it with like a chair, but it would have to be like super low down. You could maybe just build like, a, but it would have to be like a sturdy surface, right? There'll be, there'll be a way to do it. Right? Use your bottom step. Use yeah, your bottom yeah. step of your flight of stairs. If you've got enough space behind you to get out into a plank position, mm -hmm. there's no reason that you can't use your own just the bottom stair at home for a lot of stuff that you'd use a proper um, step for in the gym. Anyway, you know that, that that's that that sort of thing, um, especially you know, um, like I say, just little hops on and off the bottom stair, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. You could do um, like uh, I used to call them bunny hops, so where you'll come down in a squat, so your bum just say touches the step, and then like almost squat jump out of it. You know, so you can use a step as a prop to give someone an idea how low they should be going as well. You know. Um, again, like I've used a step under a squat and said like, right, just come down to your your bum, touch the step. Don't rest on the step, but then come back up from that point again. So you can use it as a prop. You can use it as a marker. You can use it to give a little bit of guidance, or you can just use it as a piece of fitness kit and do a load of different stuff with that as, as, as well, you know, and again, they're not too expensive, you know, for how versatile they are. Um, I would think... There's an argument to be made for going and spending twenty quid on a fitness step instead of going out and spending twenty quid on a kettlebell. Do you know what I mean? They they, they can they can be used just as um sort of just as widely in, in a range of different stuff. Um so 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 again, maybe thinking about what your goals are, what it is specifically that you're trying to get out of it, and thinking about where these different bits of fitness kit can actually be used and 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 and, and come in handy. Uh, okay, guys. So where were we? Number seven was step. Number eight was the kettlebell. Yeah. So so while while we're on kettlebells, um, essentially um, a medicine ball with a handle. You know. So uh, again, we'll, we'll we'll get to have a look at these in, in in just a second as we're going through. So it's a medicine ball with a handle that you can use for a lot of different stuff. Um, and because of the way they're set up and because of the handle that they've got on them, um, you can use them through a lot of different ranges than you would be safe to with a barbell. Like I wouldn't get a barbell and start doing, trying to do like a kettlebell swing. Do you know what I mean? Like a big hip, hip thrust and raise the bar up the shoulder, shoulder height. It's just not designed to be used that way. Whereas a kettlebell is, you know, they're normally quite, quite round as well to be sort of aerodynamic and sort of fly through the air and whatever it is that you're doing with them. Uh, and they're designed to fit quite well to your body and the palm of your hand and stuff like that as well, depending, course, on, yeah. depending on what it is that you're going to be doing with them. So, Kettlebell again, they're gonna have the weight on the side so you can pick what weight it is that you um is you want oh, to make sure I you do. get the right weight. I do. The Just double rub at the moment, but oh, yeah, no, it's good, man. Morning, Chief. Rob's just saying good morning, man. Is that live? <laughs> they're not, they're not, yeah, it's live, yeah. Right, so... are, are you going to be are you, are you hanging about because I'll, uh, I'll have a bit crack with you in a, like an hour or so yeah yeah I'll be alright nice uh, okay guys so uh, number number nine was was barbell a barbell so if you've um, chances are if you've seen any form of weights before you'll have seen a barbell um, it's it's the old big long metal bar with just plates on either side pretty much um, you can get them preloaded where the weights are almost sort of soldered onto the end and you can't change the weight so like you might buy like a rack of them you might get like a 10 kilogram a 20 kilogram a 30 kilogram and you can't change the weights or you might get um the more typical ones that you might have seen is you just get the barbell um which can be up to 20 kilograms themselves anyway you yeah, know um, yeah, you, you, get, you, you get the barbell um and then you just put the weights on either side to build up that weight to whatever level that it is you want you'll slide the clips on at either end to make sure that those plates can't slide off and you can use it and you use the bar safely um and 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 that is what you're going to use and that's how you're going to use a barbell pretty much um you can get some really really good for big lifts what we call like compound lifts your squats your deadlifts that sort of thing uh, because you can focus on all I have to do pretty much is lift this bar, you know. Um, there's sort of like pros and cons to, to dumbbells, which we'll talk about in just a sec. But but your, your barbell, I would say, one of the biggest things to watch out with a barbell, and, and, and Daniel sort of alluded to it earlier on, is if you're taking weight off a barbell, make sure you do it evenly from both sides, you know. Yeah. A 20-kilogram sort of um, disparity isn't going to cause it to flip up most of the time. 
but I would always be careful if you take a weight off this end, go to the other end and take a weight off that end and keep it keep it even. Because if you take all the weight off one end, it's going to fly up. And then, of course, the end with all the weight on is going to drop. And unfortunately, the end that's going to fly up into the air is the end that is under your face, pretty much. So you you want to be out the way of that. I've seen it happen. Um, I've seen people... Um, Hurt, hurt, hurt themselves physically, and I've seen them hurt their pride as well. You know, so one, one, one guy did that. He, he genuinely nearly lost his eye. It caught him about here, wow. uh, and I never, I never saw him in the gym after that. I don't know whether it was his, his, his ego was a little bit bruised as well, because obviously it makes a big clutter. Um, but, but yeah, I never, I never saw him after that. But he was l- lucky, you know. He, he, he was lucky. He didn't, didn't lose his eye through that. Definitely. Did- for, for some reason, like, the, the only time I've ever had, like, an incident like that was where, and I don't know why that we did it like this, because look, probably with kids, obviously, but, like, looking back, it, it was just stupid, but I was doing a negative reps on bench, and for a start, like, I don't think, I mean, pro- they probably work for some people, but I think, like, I really, I feel like I put so much strain on my body for that, because effectively, like, a, a negative rep, or the, or the ones that we were doing is, you basically, you take the load of a weight that's too heavy for you to lift, and you can kind of take it all the way down and then you get your spot to kind of pick it back up again and it helps yeah. you get used to weights that are kind of slightly over what you would lift anyway and then maybe like kind of prepare yourself to you know be able to lift it but um yeah. so i was doing negative reps of a of a, of, a, of, a, of like a on bench press and for some reason it's so dumb but like obviously when you have a spotter you should always have a spotter or from my understanding you should have the spotter in the middle and then mm-hmm. they kind of help lift from the middle so it's like mm-hmm. balanced but I had yeah. two of my friends on each side of the barbell, which I don't know oh. why, which is so dumb. And uh, so they lifted together, but one of my friends lifted quicker than the other friend, getting it off mm-hmm. my chest. And then the weight just like tipped. And then all yeah. of the weights yeah. just like spilled out and the bar like spazzed out. And like everyone yeah. in the gym was just looking at us. And everyone looked at me. It, was, it kind of was well, my course. fault, ultimately. Course, yeah. But everyone's looking at me because the belt was on my chest and uh, the, the, the barbell was on my chest. So I yeah. was like, oh man. And, uh, yeah, it's just awkward. Unfortunately, nobody got hurt, but it could have actually, like, yeah. you know, could have shinned my mate because the barbell just went... Whoosh. Oh, definitely. Um, so, yeah. but uh, Yeah, definitely. Technology, man. But, yeah, yeah, I think negative reps, I think that they are... Uh, I think that a lot of people get injured off them as well, so I think you have to watch it with, with those, so... Yeah, yeah, and we're um, we're actually planning because because it's um of course men's men's health week this week. Yeah. And um, we're planning on later on in the week we're gonna we're gonna try and get a Q and A set up where pretty much um people can just jump on and pick my brains pretty much you know on 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 on, on stuff like that when it comes to different training techniques because like like you say there Daniel like negative reps depending on what you're training for can be really beneficial. And then, depending on what you're training for, could potentially set you back and probably cause injuries and, and, and be adding to niggles and stuff like that that you don't even need to be doing, you know? So, um, yeah, when, when we know um, a little bit more about that, it'll obviously go out on socials and stuff like that. So, so definitely keep your eyes peeled, guys. So if you have got any questions um, that maybe don't necessarily relate to exactly what we're talking about in the session or that we cover on any of the courses, that's a really good chance to just sort of dive on and, uh, like, like I say, sort of, Awesome. Pick, pick me brain and ask any questions that you that you might have when it comes to your own training, training in general, nutrition, or, or, or anything like that. So keep keep your eyes peeled for that one, guys. Um, and like I say, we'll make sure that goes out when we know about it. Um, just alluding to what Daniel said a second ago, if you've ever seen, if you're struggling to picture what a barbell looks like still, um, if you've ever seen anybody get trapped under a weight on a fails video or a, like a Facebook video or on social media or anything like that. That's a barbell. That is a barbell. That is the one that you're going to get, um, that you're going to get probably stuck under it. If any, um, when we come to dumbbells, uh, we'll, we'll, like I say, we'll, we'll have a, a quick little look at the pros and cons of those as well. And of course, one of the biggest pros is you can't get trapped under dumbbells because you've got a weight in each hand. If you come down and it's too heavy, you just drop on either side and then nobody needs to know that you were struggling to get that weight back up. <laughs> you know, so yeah, you can just play it off as like, yeah, that was meant to be two reps. All the yeah. time, though, but like, that's the thing. Like, it's like, like obviously we spoke, I've told you before that, that with dumbbells, uh, for, for me, it's, it's much easier on my shoulder. But, uh, like just yeah, there's so many times where I go to get that last rev and it just won't come. But because I'm by myself, it's fine, and I just put it under my chest and then like sit up and yeah. then I just unload it with. So it's yeah. uh, it's it's much um, safer if you're by yourself to do dumbbells 100. percent Definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the next one that we had, uh, number ten, was ladders. 
So if you've ever seen like a like a like a fitness ladder, I mean regular ladders, you go up and down regular ladders enough, you're gonna get tired. You know, it's 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 harder work than you think. It's climbing, you're using your upper body. And um, if you've ever done like rock climbing or bouldering or anything like that, like I'll be the first one to tell you that you're gonna use muscles that you didn't even know that you had. Um I remember obviously um obviously as as kids at school we had climbing frames and stuff like that because it's, it's a good way of getting energy out um and then you might you might have seen the sort of ladders that we're talking about here where we're talking like um might be sort of laid out on the floor and you know you might be getting somebody to do again sort of like um i know american footballers do it quite a lot because their footwork's really important and being able to get like both feet in a square and then move down to the next square and then the next square as fast as they can like that sort of thing um, can be can be like I said, really really good for footwork and conditioning. Um, if I can get a picture of yeah, um, bum, bum. where are we? So you might have like this sort of thing, like um, like that guy's doing there, where he's got like obviously the ladder down. He's doing sort of shuttles in and out. He's going one foot in, one foot out, that sort of thing. There's lots of different stuff you can do with them. I used to um, again, I used to get people to come like alongside the ladder start at one end but sort of not looking up the ladder but sort of um like looking down the ladder that way and then i would get them to move one hand at a time into the next square shuffle their feet down so they're staying in that plank and then work their way down move your hands down move your feet down from one end of the ladder to the other and that's not just uh, obviously like your basic plank but you're moving as well your cause having to stabilize so much more yeah um, again again it could be it could be quite a cost effective bit of kit um, I wouldn't normally know this because I've just looked at it. That one there was about 15 quid. So you, you, you can even start to get yourself like some of we've mentioned before. If you've saved yourself a little bit of money from a gym membership or something over the last year, you know, where you'd be paying 20, 30, 40 quid a month. Um, you can potentially now look and think, okay, um, you might have decided you're not going back to a gym anytime soon, you know. Um, maybe you are gonna 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 just say right, okay, I'm just gonna use that money and get myself some bits of kit for at home. Yeah. You know, you could but again, depending on what your goals are, you could get a lot more out of your money and your and, and, and your and your kit just by getting, like I say, the skipping ropes, the cones, the the step, uh, the the ladder, rather than going and spending a couple hundred quid on like a like a barbell set. Yeah. You know, that maybe that you maybe is going to get up to like twenty kilograms either side or something like that. Um. So again, just th just thinking about your goals, um. But the, of course, they're, they're they're really sort of um compact and tidy away really well as well. These ladders, skipping ropes, cones, stuff like that. Barbell, you've just got to find somewhere to put a barbell. Really, at the end of the day, That's it, like man. storage of barbells is something that I've seen done differently in every single gym I've been to. It's quite interesting actually, like how it's it's obviously something that every gym has to do but everyone i've been in just just deals with it totally differently because like i say storage is something you've got to think about weight plates i've never seen a 20 kilogram weight plate that's that's smaller than that you know what i mean so again you're getting proper weights that sort of thing uh free weights you've got to find space for them you've got to move them as well like if you've ever tried moving weights like i i, I remember being on shift by myself one day when the new set of dumbbells turned up and the dumbbells go up to 60 kilograms each so I'm like, I weigh 60 kilograms each. I, I, do you know what I mean? So at first I was like, yeah, I'll start with the fives. I got the fives in, carried them both, you know, like uh, one in each hand, got up to the tens. Yes, I'm all right. Got up to the twenties, no bother. Around about the thirties, my forearm made me grip started to go. So I was like, right, I'm going to have to just go one at a time. But yeah, even, even carrying them, like the first time I really considered it was when I was working at Argos and someone came along and bought like a weight set where you get the barbell. And I got the barbell, set it down the conveyor belt. That was no bother. I went and got the clips were separate for some reason. I went and get, got the clips. And then I went and got the box that had like the weight plates in. And, and mate, like, it was only, I think, the, there wasn't even 100 kilograms there altogether. But all these weight plates, they add up. They had, they add up. So yeah. I had to go and actually take a trolley to put the weights on to take them out to the customer and then take them out to the car. So like if you're, if you're buying weights, you've got to think about actually transporting them and how you're going to get them from point A to point B because it's all well and good. They weigh something when you're using them for training, but they still weigh the same even when you're not and you're just transporting them. So you've got to think about that too. Dude, like uh, we had the um, steel girder delivered last week and there were like, there's like several girders and they're like 200K each. And they're stupid, just, like, they're still good, yeah. Insane, dude. Like, just <laughs> like the heaviest thing ever, but like impossible to like grip as well. So it's mm -hmm. just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> I feel sorry because it was like hair from in the boulders, right? And I was like just filming because obviously I'm doing like that documentary for it. <laughs> just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, yeah. like relaxing in there, like proper like, ah, ah. Like, so, yeah, you have yeah. a coffee in one hand, camera yeah, in the yeah, other. So yeah. My arms are hurting of holding this camera. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, class one, class, yeah, yeah, but it, it, it is, it's deceptive, isn't it, how, like I say, we consider these things and the role that they play and what we use them for, and the fact that they need to be heavy, but then we don't really stop and think about what it takes to get them from point A to point B and get them get them into where we need them to be, you exactly. know, so, again, if you're thinking about moving stuff around, having kit at home, stuff that's going to need to come in, go away, you want to be thinking about, do you want to be doing that with 200 kilograms worth of kit every time, exactly. um, or are some of these other bits of kit a little bit more suitable for you? Yeah. Um, Okay, guys, let's finish these up then. So we had uh, number 11 was a dumbbell. So uh, again, we're going to look at those in a second. But a dumbbell, it's essentially um, too many barbells, really. That's how I've always thought about it. You've got um, a, a tiny bar in each hand that you can adjust the weights on the end of each rather than one big bar that you're going to use and just change the weights on both ends. And the beauty, or, the, or the, the, the biggest beauty I've always thought of having a weight in each hand is that each, each arm or each side i guess is working independently if you're doing a bench press um if you're if, if you're doing a bench press and you've got a barbell and you're struggling the arm that you're stronger with and probably the arm that you write with is going to be more dominant do more pushing take over this side of your chest might develop more than the other side of your chest or might get stronger more than the other yeah. side of your chest whereas with a with a with a dumbbell each side is working independently so, you know, if this side presses a 30 kilogram dumbbell, you know that this side has done all the work, just as if this side presses a 30 kilogram dumbbell. If you've got a 60 kilogram barbell and you just push it, you don't know how that's been spread out across that muscle group. You don't know how that's recruited those muscle fibers. Um, and, and, and again, like Daniel mentioned earlier on, if you are doing a bench or even an overhead press, um, it's a lot easier to get out of the way if you're struggling and just drop your dumbbells or, or bring them down um, than it is to, 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 to bring your barbell down under control. Um, I've even, I've, I've even seen with a barbell, people go to do a shoulder press and catch themselves on the chin and the nose on the way past as well. So, like, if you get up and if and you're struggling to get all the way and lock out and you need to bring that barbell down and you, pr it's pretty much falling and you're just trying to slow it as much as you can, the last thing you need is for it to hit the bridge of your nose on the way down. Like, you, you really don't need that going on. Um, so, so, again, depending on what it is you're doing, dumbbells could probably be uh, a little bit more beneficial. Especially mate, when you see people doing like um, Olympic lifts and they're like doing like a snatch or something and they're just like hurling the bar at the body. It's like yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it's terrifying to watch sometimes because it's like, you know, that like could easily cause an accident. Right. It's like uh, and it yeah. happens where people hit themselves in the face or they go up to do like a clean and press and they're like pushing. Yeah. Because yeah. there's, there's, yeah. there's that. um we like a clean. You correct me if I'm wrong here because I don't know 100 percent, but I think right that like instead of like with a military press you you know you stood and then you're lifting with your shoulders but with a cleaner press you kind of push your legs right as well you put your legs yeah. into it too so mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. like obviously the, you're pushing upwards with all of your body weight it's like so yeah. it's more explosive yeah. isn't it it's yeah. more explosive the aim is to move from point a as quickly as you can with as much intensity to, for, to increase your chances of getting up there but if you hit someone in your face on the way past yeah you, you, you are you are going to know about it but then you've got it the other way around, whereas uh, I would use a barbell sometimes, if you've ever seen it done, I would wedge one end of the barbell into the corner of the room, and then you've almost got like this this pivot. So what I would do would get someone to stand there and do sort of like shoulder press, pushing it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, so you're yeah. pushing out more in front, you could combine a squat with that as well. So um, again, that is somewhere where a barbell would be more, more useful. You couldn't use a dumbbell for those. But there are definitely times where you want to be using dumbbells rather than barbells, um, even just in the names of safety and making sure that your body's working sort of evenly and not just sort of relying more on one muscle group or on one side. Um, that's for sure. Um, then number number twelve, our last one is 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 a favourite of mine, which you guys will probably know by now. Is a is a resistance band as well. Yeah. Um, so I've actually I've actually got a couple down here. Uh, that was handy. So it's it's essentially a big elastic band pretty much and like this one it works like a loop so you can put it around it normally goes around your ankles around your knees uh, and you use them on like squats use them for like leg extensions leg abductions and stuff like that but you can even do sort of like um lap pull downs that sort of thing you can hold that there That's and cool. do like uh do like a, almost like a like a press for the front of your shoulders yeah, yeah that sort of thing yeah you can do the same and push lateral out to the side to get the side of your shoulder work as well so again i think i've got um there is 
three different weights. This one died a death not so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> that, one, that, that one died and scared the life out of us when it did. Um, but these these ones here, um, I think it was about nine quid or like a tenner for, for three different um, strengths of band. So you might find that when you're doing upper body stuff, when you're using a smaller muscle like your shoulder, you might want a, a smaller muscle to work against like that. Whereas if you're using bigger muscles like your legs, you might want, a slightly thicker one that's going to give you a little bit more resistance yeah um, have, have a little bit more um have a little bit more about it and just make things a little bit harder for you as well um and then you might get the resistance band that looks more like um they call them a theraband and it's pretty much it doesn't loop yeah it doesn't loop it's the same sort of material but it doesn't loop and again from there we can do things like sort of um pulling apart get your back working like get the back of your shoulders working yep. uh, and, and and of course loads of different stuff out there sometimes stand on that and loop it around and almost do like a deadlift sort of movement as well um, yep. but there's so much different stuff you can do with resistance so bands like that there was a time during lockdown when I was pretty much training and um, ex- just entirely with resistance bands, really, you know, because, um, of course, you put the yoga on top for, like, stability and stuff like that. Um, but, but yeah, doing the exercise, I, I don't have a dumbbell at all. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, I, I rely on stuff like like my resistance bands and stuff like that. Uh, and like I say, there's so much you can do with them. Um, and I know that a, co- a couple of our learners have, have, have picked up some new resistance band exercises and doing them. And, and and like I say, especially during lockdown, they've been uh, they've been really helpful. Yeah, Just being yeah. able to do something and, and mix it up for yourself a bit. It's all I've been using lately. I haven't been back to the gym yet, and I've just been using resistance bands. But like, as really, you say, yeah, you can get so much done with them, right? Especially mm-hmm. because you mm-hmm. can have like a light one, a medium one, and and, 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 a, and a heavy one. And also, mm-hmm. then there's two different kinds. So there's the kind for your legs as well, like the, the, the closed one, like you just showed, yeah. and then there's the open-ended one, like the furrow bands. So yeah, mm-hmm. I've, been, I've been using both of them. And then uh, just so many exercises, like if I sit down and then I put it behind me, you know, you've got your tricep extensions. Of course, um, of course, yeah. Sit down and bicep curl? hold yeah. it here. You've got your sh- shoulder press. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and then if I stand, I, sometimes what I do for bicep curl is I'll stand up, stand on the band and then mm-hmm. i'll do the curls like that yeah 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 Amazing, yeah you know? really good so there's, 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 yeah. there's honestly so much i'm always looking for like a new exercise to do yeah as you were saying as well like lateral mm-hmm. raises mm-hmm. stand on it and yeah. do your raises as well it's going to do your shoulders um, yeah one of the ones i like doing for my shoulders is coming into like a coming into like this sort of position get, getting it looped round yeah but then doing like like side raises, that sort of thing. Oh, yeah, that's Because you're, sort of, you're, yeah. you're pulling apart, and obviously the wider you come, the more you're going to recruit the side of your shoulder. Yeah. If you keep your shoulders right back, yeah. you'll increase that even more, because if you that's round good. forward too much, it's going to be front delve. Yeah, so yeah. if you can pull them shoulders right back and come out as wide as you can, yeah, that's going to be uh, that's, that's going to be lateral delve. But then just come up to about shoulder height. Yeah. If you come any higher, your traps take over anyway. So yeah, if you just come up to about there, yeah, it's, uh, just... just Again, totally different exercise, and you can you can change it up for yourself week on week or session on session without needing to necessarily go out and, and change your kit or invest in a load of different kit or change around the space that you're working in. Even um, I was doing uh, like bent over rows as well, so I'd stand on it as well. I put my feet slightly forward, and then I'd like wrap it yes. around my hands, and then I'd kind of bend, and I'd do like a bent over row, and yeah. even like an upright row you can kind of do as well, like like uh, like like that with it when you're standing, mm-hmm. if you're standing on the band. But mm-hmm. I, I saw another thing that was pretty good. But you kind of you need like a, a hook or something you can anchor it to. Yes, like I an saw, anchor. Yeah. I saw people. Do a lot like, of them come with. Yeah, I saw people do like yeah. se- seated rows, and they look yeah. looks like yeah, yeah, you yeah. Can do a lot of good stuff if you've got a thing that you can anchor it on. And um, people were doing like uh, extensions turned against it and crunches and stuff like because it basically yeah. becomes like a cable then, doesn't it? Like the same it, thing. It is, you, yeah. You, so you know, yeah. Yeah, even if like, and, and and I mean like, you've got to be really confident that it's on there properly, but you can just tie it around the door handle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or you can tie it to something heavy and put that heavy thing on the other side of the door and just close the door and let, yeah. the, let the band run underneath the door. Yeah, and yeah. then like you see, it, it, it's anchored. You can do, you can do poles, you can do sort of like torso twists, that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. There's, there's loads of different stuff you can do with it. And ju- just, just before we move on, one of my favorite things about the resistance bands is that it, it, it's, it's essentially the way it, it recruits the muscle. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's very similar to when you asked me about how, uh, the difference between training with chains. Um, not 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 so long ago. It's a case of when you when you're using a barbell and all you've got is the weight. The point where your body and your muscles work the hardest is when you're trying to get that that weight from not moving to moving. Yeah, yeah exactly. in order to, yeah. to get that initiation. So 
the bottom part of a chest press or the bottom part of an overhead press is when your shoulders are working the hardest because <laughs> it's trying to get the weight moving. To an extent, you can almost kind of coast through the rest of the movement once it is moving. Whereas if you're using the resistance band, your muscle still does that initial right we need to work from here. But as the band gets tighter, the muscle needs to stay engaged and is actually working against more resistance the higher up you come. Yeah, so yeah definitely. That's recruiting the muscle all the way to the top and keeping the muscle working through the full range, rather than if I was doing it with with a, with a like a just weight and I'm like once I've got it moving that's the hardest bit and I can just coast all the way up to the top pretty much. So yeah, that that, that that's one of the biggest benefits because especially if you get to like a locked out position or not necessarily locked out but nearly locked out like if I come up to there, even just holding that there is keeping tension on my shoulder. You know, you can even put that little pause in as well, rather than just doing a twist and then coming back to start, you can do a twist, hold it, feel that muscle engage, and then slowly come back around as well. So it, I, I feel like it helps you keep in tune with your body a little bit more throughout the movement. Um, I, I think it was you that had mentioned putting it around your back and doing press-ups. Yeah, mate, yeah, I did that, yeah, as well. Yeah. It's pretty it's good really as well. Good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like um, wrapping it around your back and then you kind of have, you hold onto it and then you just put that bit down and then you, when you're doing a press-up, obviously you've got that resistance going against your back as well. So it's like, it's like yeah. it becomes like a weighted press-up even, which is really good. Yeah. So yeah. Adds a little bit of resistance, yeah. yeah. Obviously you don't have like a... Um, it, 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 it's not like when a, you know obviously if you have like a, a weighted backpack on or something when you when you're doing like or a weighted vest mm-hmm. when you're doing those press ups mm-hmm. it might be a little bit better because you've got the resistance all the way whereas when you're doing mm-hmm. that you're not going to have the resistance until you reach where where it's going to meet the band um mm-hmm. so, but but it's still good though so yeah it definitely yeah. definitely definitely helps yeah. i think um yeah I, I, I love them even like some of the stuff that i was doing it like because i i'd used them like years ago when the physio uh Ferbus gave it to me when i had a shoulder injury so even mm-hmm. like for, for for just doing like general rotator cuff exercises like um yeah uh, you know obviously some of the stuff you just showed there like i'll hold the band on one side there yeah. and then i'll just kind of like if I, actually if i like maybe it's like just sit up a bit so so like i'll hold yeah like i'll hold the band like here and then i'll just turn yeah. my arm that way and i'll just yeah. do like yeah. uh, rotator cuff exercises like that and yeah. that, that works really well as well and then i'll do yeah. ones this way as well so i'll hold it down and i'll just raise mm-hmm. my arm to there and then mm-hmm. it, it just you know kind of keeps that rotator cuff it warms it up especially so i do that yeah is a warm-up for every single uh exercise and it kind of it helps that yeah it definitely helps and um because i think that's some of the most common injuries are rotator cuff injuries for sure rotator cuff, yeah yeah, yeah. Any, anything we're pushing anything with your arms raised your rotator cuffs are, are working like i've had i've had lads that were 22 23 year old it was just rotate the cuffs shock for me they're driving all day typing all day yeah, that yeah. sort of thing um hairdressers and stylists get it quite a lot because you've got arms up dealing with hair painting nails that sort of thing like it it, it is really common um and, and like you say it's it's one of them things that people don't normally put any focus on until they've hurt them and then they're like oh i've got i've got to take care of me rotate the cuff it's like prevention's better than cure yeah, and that sort of yeah, stuff yeah. That daniel was on about there like i say you can do like those sort of um those sort of um, sort of road rotator cuff exercises. The one that you, the one that you just showed us there a second ago. Yeah, yeah. You were coming. The band was there, wasn't it? And you were pulling out over. And it's like, yeah, it's like it's best to yeah, hold yeah. Y- your um your arm in tight to your, to your, to your like body because yeah. otherwise you, you're going to end up using other like muscles. Whereas if you hold it yeah. in tight to your body, you are isolating your uh, rotator cuff, and then it's yeah. like from there you just pull it out and then you just literally lift your arm that way. Yeah. So if you think of that. Think of that as an external pull, yeah, because you're pulling yeah, yeah. away from the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you think, if you can move the weight to over there, yeah, tied onto something, you can do internal pulls as well yeah, and pulling exactly. towards the body. Didn't even yeah, think about that, yeah. But so, yeah. So doing a, doing a good mix of all of those, um, like you say, you rotate the cuff. It's like a it's like a small collection of muscles, and the more angles you can work it through, the better, really. Definitely. Um, yeah, so. Um, it's the same as if you do a bicep curl, uh, you, you want to make sure that you're doing your triceps as well to balance them out so you don't get those muscular imbalances and the rotator cuff works exactly the same. Um, so, so yeah, um, give them a good little mix up. But it, it's, like you say, buddy, really, really good for just those stretching as well and, and just mobility sort of stuff. Like resistance bands, I, would, um, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that there's anybody that's not going to get a tenner's worth out of res- out of the set of resistance band, definitely. If you, it's one, especially once you know what you're doing, 100%.
hundred percent. Um, right, guys. So, um, just just to finish us up a little bit, we're going to have a look through. Um, just to give you a bit more of a visual on some of these different bits of kit as well. And I know that I've shown a couple. Um, I know that we've actually looked looked at a couple online as well and say saying how much they're sort of going for. Um, just just to maybe get you thinking a little bit if you are going to treat yourself to any bits of kit or anything like that. So, um, yeah, just 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 working through these images so you can get a bit of an idea of what's what. Um, obviously the first one that we've got on there, this first slide, the resistance band and the step. The resistance band, you can see um, that these are, these are these are doing similar to what me and Daniel were just on about. You know, depending on what it is you're doing, I would imagine that them on there are doing some kind of hold over there, pull overhead. Yeah. That's what that looks like to me to get um, to get to get these lats working down the side. Um, that's what that looks like to me. But like I say, there's a load of different ways you can use them, and we can see from that picture of the exercise step. Um, that's what I meant earlier on. You can see how the one in the foreground has got just one purple, almost sort of like a box underneath it to raise it up one level. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah. other, the other one we can see in the background has got, I think, two. Yeah. Um, so, so again, and um, there'll probably be a pile of them next to the steps, and you can just grab however many you want to make it however tall you want it to be for stepping on, jumping on, whatever it is that you're going to be doing. Um, and then normally um, they've got like a, like a, a layer of rubber on the top as well. I think those ones definitely do just to give you a little bit more extra grip. Because um, like I say, the, the, if, if, of course, if you elevate it, and especially if you've got any weight with you or anything like that, the last thing you want is to be sort of falling and having to deal with that on the way down as well. Um, okay, but if we can go just next slide then, please do. We've got our dumbbells and our skipping rope. So dumbbells might be looking a little bit more familiar now. Like I say, those ones there are what we would call sort of preloaded. You're not going to be able to change the weight of those. They look like two kilogram, um, and they're always going to be two, two kilogram really, whereas you might get some dumbbells that are just a bar, and you can actually unscrew the weights on either end and put whatever weight on that you want to sort of change the weight up. These ones here, you'll probably find they tend to come in what we call like a dumbbell tree, or it's just like a stack of them or a rack of them pretty much. You'll have the ones at the top, then twos, threes, four, five. They tend to go down to like tens, maybe maybe 10 kilograms um, and, and, and have one of each. So they're actually more expensive than you'd think as well. Like a, like a dumbbell tree, you'd probably pay a couple of hundred quid, especially like yep. brand new. Brand new, yeah. Like I say, you think all the different kit you could get in terms of steps, ladders, um, cones, resistance bands, the amount of stuff you could go out and buy yourself fitness kit wise before you went and just got a load of like just 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 free weights. Um, by all means, if if you know what you're doing with free weights and that's what you need for your training, then 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 happy days. But so many people, I think during lockdown, have thought that they need to get fit and think that they need to have a home gym and that that means they've got to go out and get like a load of weight plates and loads of kit and loads yeah. of machines and. That's not what it takes to uh, to, to get fit uh, to get and stay fit. That's for sure. I'm not sure if you've seen those dumbbells, dumbbells, mate. Where it's like uh, that you can like change the weight on the dumbbell, and it's like all internal. It's the most <laughs> surreal thing ever. I think we've got some um, like next door, and it's like literally like so. I, I don't even know how it works, but you can like kind of change the dumbbell internally to how much weight it's gonna like resistance it's gonna give. It's yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly how they work. They're, 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 they're pretty fascinating. I've seen them done like it felt like five years ago. Even they were, that's what you saw the pro athletes training with. That's what, that's what celebrities were using to get in there in the like shape of films and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. And I think they must have just become that much more available to the public and maybe it's a little bit more sort of cost effective. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll have to get my head in next door and have a look at them. It, it, it is interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, 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 it really is. Um. Okay, so that's our dumbbells. We've got our skipping ropes, of course. If you've ever skipped in your life, there's only so much skipping ropes are going to change over time. Uh, if you want to get yourself one that's uh, got, got flashy tassily handles, go for it. You know who am I to judge? If you if you want a flashy tassily skipping rope, knock yourself out. Um, whatever it is that you want to do, like I say, that you can get one for a couple of quid, especially if you're going actually in 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 in, in store and stuff like that. You can pick them up quite cheap. Um, you might get like a set of two or two or three of them online for five or ten or whatever it is. But again, really, really good source of fitness. Just to make sure that you've cleared enough space and everybody else knows what you're, what you're doing as well. Because that was one that I always had to mark out. Because um, obviously if the skipping rope's moving fast enough, nobody can see the skipping rope. And yeah. that is all it takes. I've, I've, I've come close to taking a skipping rope around the face a couple of times just oh, from man. like walking around circuits and stuff like that and, and all of a sudden you get this dra draft of wind you're like where's that come from yeah I, it's um yeah just 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 be aware of your of your surroundings and, and the space that you've got available to you 
Uh, okay, buddy, next slide then, uh, and we're nearly there for the day. Um, so, medicine balls, like I mentioned earlier on, it's essentially just a ball that is going to be filled with usually sand, yeah. if not some kind of gel, some kind of liquid. Um, and like I say, they're going to be, specifically, they're going to be different weights, and you can do a lot of different stuff with them, you know. You can even do sort of like slams. Thing. Most of them bounce back up to you. Some of them are a little bit more hardcore, where they just sort of like stick to the ground, and you've even got to go back down and pick it up again. They're even more brutal. Uh, yeah. those, those are the ones I used to like. It's like, that's not even going to bounce and help <laughs> you out. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then, and then of course, like I say, I've seen people do sort of like you do sit up, sit ups with them. Um, you can even sit back to back with a friend and just sort of pass them and take them from the other side. And really, really good for sort of like your lower back, for core strength, for your obliques down the side because you're twisting with weight as well. So again, a lot of different bits we can do with uh, with with medicine balls, especially when it comes to resistance. But a lot of sort of cardio stuff as well, depending on how we structure it. Trampolines as well are going to do a little bit of a mix of both. I sort of mentioned earlier on where you can jump on and be out of breath really quick from doing. Um, I used to like getting people to do mountain climbers on the treadmill, or on, not on the treadmill, on the trampoline. So they'd have their hands on the edge, they'd be in a plank and they're just running as fast as they can against the uh, the trampoline sort of work and against you as well um, as you put your foot back down, which obviously makes them that much harder. Um, whereas I used to do another one where I used to get people to jump but only their lower half, if that makes sense. So you're keeping your head as level as you can and your legs are stamping down onto the trampoline, but then almost coming up to like chin height afterwards. It's hard to explain. It looks a little bit Gangnam style. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it pretty much did, yeah. But you know what, mate? After 45 seconds of that, your quads would be screaming at you oh, because my. you're not only landing, you're stamping down every single time and working against a trampoline that's trying to come up. And, and like you would think it would be more cardio and depending on the way you structured it, a trampoline could be really cardio, but there is a way to, to really, really burn your muscles and really sort of stimulate those muscle fibers using the trampoline as well. So don't write them off as something that you just haven't been on since you were a kid. You know, especially if it is like a specific class that you see come up that you that you quite fancy going along to. I can hands down tell you that, yes, the people that have been going to that class for a while are going to look more natural on there. It, it stands to reason that's going to be the case with any class that you go to. Other new people, and when people go to the first time, they're probably going to be in the same boat as you that they haven't been on a trampoline since school. Do you know what I mean? Like, you, you're probably not you, you're not going to stand out on or not be as inexperienced as you think, because that is the majority of people going yeah, coming to these types of classes. I can vouch for that as someone who's taught them. You know, I haven't seen many people jump on a trampoline and it'd be like 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 uh, like a duck to water sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? It takes a bit of getting getting used to. It really does. I bet it would be great for like certain sports. I think like for like something like a takedown defense in MMA, like trying to stop mm -hmm. being taken down. I think it would be so good because it's gonna uh, work on your like you know your center of gravity and keep you balanced, right? So yeah. I think that like yeah. stuff like that, it would be great for something like that. I bet. Yeah, definitely. I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that, um, but yeah, about balance in general. Yeah, really good for stuff like that. Um, and like I say, there's you don't really need to know how to use them by yourself because there's fitness classes out there that use them. You know, you'll mm -hmm. go along, you'll get your own trampoline, and uh, and probably half an hour later you'll be you'll be on your way out the door, sweaty and and having enjoyed yourself. Because you know what, it was always good crack as well. Because you can't you can't be miserable jumping on a trampoline. You just can't. No, I know. Like, I've, I've 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 never seen anybody do that. Um, you know, it, it's it's a bit of a laugh. It's a bit of a giggle, I and mean, it's it's a different way of looking at fitness that isn't right. I've got to go to the gym. You know, which which was some for some people is absolutely massive. Uh, okay, guys, last couple of slides. Then uh, if we can spin on, we've got a barbell. Like I sort of mentioned earlier on, if you've seen weights, especially if you've, if you've seen people get be unfortunate enough to get stuck under a bar in the gym and stuff like that, it's a barbell that they've been using. Um, really good for big lifts. They can take a lot of weight. Of course, with a dumbbell, you're not going to get a hundred kilograms on each. You know, um, you're going to be really really struggling just in terms of picking them up with 100 kilograms on each end, just because the way that they are. Um, whereas with a barbell, you know, you've got a lot more space to move in the middle. You can get the weights either side and you can get them. You can get them pretty heavy. Let's be honest. Like when you see, um, say like the world's strongest man, like where you see, um, oh, Eddie Hall, when he broke the deadlift record, the bar was sagging like that, wasn't it? Like the bar was literally Crazy. like almost melting. And it's like, it, it's it's pure steel, it's pure metal. And there's no way you'd get that much weight on a barbell, yeah, on, on a dumbbell, sorry. So barbells have their place as well. Um, exercise mat, we mentioned earlier on, just good for helping you get stretches on, give you a little bit of padding between you and the floor when it comes to your knees, your wrists, ankles, that sort of thing. Um, even take some impact out of some stuff. I've used exercise mats. Um, 
as like a landing pad for coming off of a box jump, yep. just because that little bit of extra cushion just takes away from impact that could go up through the ankles and the knees and the joints and stuff like that as well. Sense, so yeah. they can be yeah. used that way as well. Um, and then the last two that we've got to look at um, on the next slide is our battle rope. Um, which I mentioned earlier on, it's just a big heavy bit of rope that's going to be tied around something and you can do a lot of different things with it. Um, and then, of course, we've got our kettlebell and we've even got the guy there demonstrating what a kettlebell swing looks like. Um, so I keeping your back nice and flat, using your hips to push forward, bring the kettlebell up to about shoulder height. That's not the only thing you can do with a kettlebell, um, but it's, it's a good explosive exercise and it's always a good one to get people used to that sort of movement I've always found because... That, that movement helps them understand what it takes to have a flat back and what a flat back feels like eventually because some of us need to learn what it feels like. You might think your back's flat, you put them in front of the mirror and they're really arched over. So they need to learn what a, a flat back feels like, um, yeah. which is pretty much something that a kettlebell swing can help. Obviously, don't go too heavy till that technique's there as well. But stuff like kettlebell swings and driving them hips forward can really help with stuff like deadlifts, keeping your back flat during squats, um, which again sort of ties back to last week and making sure that we're exercising as safely as, as, as possible and not going to hurt ourselves at the end of the day. So kettlebells kettlebells have got um, can, can go a really long way as well. You could do a full session with a kettlebell. Like I, I don't doubt that for one second. You could, you could get a good workout with a kettlebell of, of one weight. Like um, it might not be as obviously as varied as, as, as you'd be able to with if, if, if you had different weights but but yeah a kettlebell would be if you were thinking about going and getting yourself a piece of kit to exercise at home especially sort of as you're getting ready to go back to the gym wherever that might be um or maybe you're just 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 more confident working from home i i would recommend considering a kettlebell yeah. as as that investment because of how far they can go uh, and, and how versatile they can be and then it's just a case of learning yourself the stuff that you can do with them and of course there's so much out there now on websites and, and, and yeah. even YouTube, do you know what I mean? You, you, you type into YouTube how to do a kettlebell swing. Um, you, you're going to find, you're going to find hundreds of different, uh, different examples. Um, always be skeptical, always yeah. be, always be assessing the sources where you're getting these, in, this information yeah. from. Um, and of course, if you're ever unsure, just, just, just give me a shout, you know, and I'm, I'm more than happy to point you towards some of the, some of the areas that I use and some of the resources I use, um, to make sure that, the understandings up, up, up to date and, and where it needs to be pretty much i think that the the, the get up exercises always seem lethal of uh, kettlebells when people are like you have the kettlebell extended and then you've got to like kind of sit up and then stand yeah. up and then that's like wow, yeah yeah that's, yeah that, they're they're pretty lethal don't they yeah yeah they're um they're, they're hard going they're hard going just because it's it's like it's again it's it's that functional sort of training like I enjoy it more because it, it relates to stuff that I do sort of day to day or, or, or will end up doing day to day as well. So yeah, that's, that's why I've gravitated towards that sort of functional training. Like I'm, 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 I'm sort of past where I want to go into the gym, jump on the chest press machine, do three sets of 10 and yeah. be like, right, what, what else do I do now? You know, keep it, keeping it fresh, keeping it um, interesting for myself as well. Um, it'd be nice to get into next door and have a little bit of a play with some of the kit that's in there because I've not been, I've not been, I've been in the office this year, yeah. you know. So, 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 um, it'd be nice to get in, see what we've got, and see what we've got. And you never know, I might be able to do some demonstrations from in there, you know. Once that'd we've got awesome, the kit, dude. yeah, that'd be so. Do cool. you know what I mean? Like, um, we'd be able to do like right. These is ten exercises you can do with a barbell, ten exercises you can do with a dumb, dumbbells, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. You know, and um, give people a little bit more focus that way. And then, of course, it's up to you guys to decide what kit you're going to use. Maybe it's investing and just go from there. But, of course, it's your fitness journey. I feel privileged to be part of it. I always do. Um, so, like like I say, a, a, anything I can do, and I know all, all the guys are the same as well. Um, we, we, we're here for you guys at the end of the day, you know. So, um, the more information we can give you and the more doors we can open for you, um, the better in terms of avenues to fitness. What would what would you uh, suggest, Rob, for like someone who's going to buy a kettlebell? Would you suggest to go, you know, is it is it a better idea to buy slightly heavier or better to buy slightly uh, lighter than you would kind of anticipate? You know, if you were gonna if you were gonna buy one, what would you what would you suggest? Because obviously, um, just what's going to give the most benefit, or would it depend on the person's goals? And I guess it it possibly depends on the person's goals in terms of just getting the most out of it that you can yeah. i would always go a little bit lighter because you yeah. might have exercises yeah. that you can't do especially if we're talking about circuit training because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how heavy your weight is like if you've got an eight kil kilogram kettlebell and you're doing upright roll for 10 reps no bother maybe mm -hmm. 60 seconds 
this, you're still going to get that burn. You're still working through that movement. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're still going to feel it. Whereas you might come to some exercises that you'd like to do, like an overhead press, yeah. single yeah. arm. Whereas if you've gone too heavy, you're not going to be able to do that. You know, so you're better off being a little bit lighter. Maybe he's being lighter through that exercise, but just just do more reps. You know, at the end of the day. Can you can you like because like obviously the, the the main kind of exercise stuff. I mean, I think UFC guys they do do some weightlifting, right? But like uh, um, the majority of the stuff they do is like strength and conditioning stuff, and like there's some mm-hmm. of the most jacked like shredded people there is. You know, relevant to their weight, obviously. So mm-hmm. like you know, they, they, they might be like 130, 140 pounds, but they'll be shredded. Um, so can you actually build muscle doing like, how effective is it to build muscle doing those kind of circuits? Cause if it's like something like a kettlebell, obviously it does, you know, but like then you're doing high reps, is it, can you still build muscle that way? Like is, is yeah, yeah, yeah. Ab- absolutely. You can, you can still build muscle that way because you are, you're tearing and you're, and you're, and you're, and you're challenging the muscle fibers yeah, really. Yeah. You know, you 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 you're forcing those muscle fibers um to work really at, at the end of the day, mm-hmm. and of course, bit of a bit of a bit of, bit of a tangent, and we'll have to, we'll we'll set a different session aside for it if need sure. be. But of course, we've got our fast twitch and our slow twitch muscle fibers as well, and some of them respond really well to high reps, some of them respond really well to low reps. So a a, a glute or your bum muscle is going to respond different to high reps than a shoulder muscle will right, because they right, oxidize yeah. differently they, they, they work differently but at the same time you can still tire that, that muscle out you can make that muscle work and at the end of the day um yes you can you can build um you can build strength and you can and and, and you can build um a little bit of muscle as well while you're doing it um it's because it's it's like i say it's all about time under tension when it comes to hypertrophy which is essentially the fancy word for muscle growth um it comes to time under tension yeah. so you're better off during a set having you going slower which is where a lot of hypertrophy training is like tempo so you might be like four seconds on the way down pause for a second at the bottom one second back up you know that's that 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 sort of thing um, that's where you're getting your time under tension. So the tension on the muscle doesn't really depend on how many reps you do or how long you do it for. Sometimes it can just depend how slow your reps are. So right. yeah, if you're finding that the weight's a little bit light, slow it down, make the rep twice the length and then see how easy you find it. Cause it is when it comes to growing a muscle, it is that, that time under tension that does that, which is totally different to strength training which is where you've just got to get used to picking heavy stuff up, really, <laughs> which is where something like your negative reps might come in a little bit more handy. You're getting your body used to taking like 100 kilograms on the way down and getting help on the way up, and then eventually you're not going to need that help on the way up because your body gets used to that weight. Um, but that is more to do with strength training than growing a muscle. Yeah, with growing yeah. a muscle, you'd be better off dropping the weight, which is something that's a mistake I made when I started training. I I would I was doing heavy lifting, yeah. not thinking about how slow I was taking things, thinking in my mind like, yeah, I'd like to get stronger. When really I was trying to put size on, and it comes back, it takes us full circle to what you mentioned earlier on with 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 your mum and 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 a friend. It's sort <laughs> of like what, what what you think as is like that's my goal. Um, a fitness instructor might hear that in a totally different way and and interpret that totally totally different. Yeah, of course. Like I say, um, I, like I say, I've had people come to me say they want to be stronger because they're carrying bags all day. It's not because they want to go to Mr. Olympia and they want to be, do, do, do you know what I mean? Like their idea of strength is, yeah, be able to lift a little bit more, but I'd like some more muscle, please. It's not like, uh, yeah. just get me as heavy as I can for one rep, turn me into like Eddie Hall, Thor, Beyonce, or, or, or whatever, you know? So um, th- 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 there is definitely a difference. Um, but yeah, that, that is a good point, buddy. I would say when it comes to um, kettlebells and stuff like that i would say always go a little bit lighter because you can always do extra reps if yeah. you can't lift it you can't you can't use it and you can't get the most of it pretty much at the end of the day um so but yeah hopefully guys that gives you a bit more of an idea at um maybe he's explained some of the kit that you might that you might have seen in a gym before you know i or in a fitness space or you've turned up at a class and you've not been to show how to do something maybe you've said will you will you will you give us something else to do instead of that i'm not overly confident you know or maybe like i say you are um sat time with the idea of investing in a little bit of kit for at home uh, to take on the go with you that you could take out in the park if going to the gym isn't isn't your thing or 
um, something that you'd like to stay away from with it for the time being, to, if you maybe waiting on vaccinations or, or or whatever it might be, you know. So there's 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 options, you know. And um, we, we've we've said all the way through through lockdown, really, we've got uh, we've got walking and staying active and stretching and that sort of thing. And you know, we're now in a position where we can start to build things up. There's now to say you've got to go back to a gym. Me and Daniel have said time and time again, fitness doesn't have to be a gym. It could be going out and about, going to the park, going exactly. on a walk or, or, or whatever, you know. And and again, you know, if you if you you can go to the park and set yourself up a little circuit. I used to, like I say, I used to do it with clients all the time. I'd take a kettlebell round, I'd take a skipping rope, I'd take some cones, you know, and we'd be using benches for step ups and dips and stuff like that. Like there's so much you can do. Yeah. There's there's there, there's there's not especially now. There's not really any restrictions on being outside yeah. and how many people you can be around and what you can be doing. And um, there's 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 so much stuff that we could be doing. Um, and and hopefully we'll be we'll be doing going forward. And again, if you guys ever have any questions coming out of a session, you know, you know, I'm just a, an email away, and I'm always happy to help. Um, I think that'll about do us for today. Then, yeah, yeah. um, if we, if if we can just go to the um, we've got a like a homework slide to do. But good news, guys, no real homework this week. All <laughs> all I want you to do really is just become familiar with um the two workbooks, uh, the 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 using tools and equipment for a practical activity, and using materials in a practical activity. So they're they're, they're pretty similar, but that's two units that we're going to start next week uh, and, and and focus on the next couple of weeks. So get a look at those. Um, just double checking because I blasted them over. Um. Yeah, the workbook, uh, the workbooks in the uh, link in the description, and of course the uh, the link to today's workout video as well, um, which is what we call an AMRAP training. I don't know if you've ever done AMRAP, Daniel, but again, it's it's really good for tiring a muscle out and getting that cardio effect. Yeah. Because what you're gonna do three exercises, so you might do I don't know twenty star jumps, ten squats, five press ups but continuously for five minutes and you're trying to get through that as many times as you can. You're going to notice muscles tiring out uh, stuff that felt easy at the start, not being so easy. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a really, it's a different way to train. So, so give that one a go guys. Let me know how you get on. If it's not really anything that you're feeling today, by all means, just follow that link, go to our um, playlist and uh, and you'll be able to pull something else on there that you want there's legs on there there's core on there you know there's there's glute workouts on there as well so yeah. there's there's something on there for everybody so by all means get on and have a, and have a look around uh, and then um, the last bit of kind of loose homework really is just start thinking about your own circuit training. Yeah. yeah. You start thinking about this own session that you're going to put together because next week we're going to start actually writing, writing down some ideas, thinking about what kit you're going to use, what exercises are going to be body weight, and then padding that out um, to eventually building up and, and, and doing your circuit cards and then just sending them over to me and, and, and getting that unit boxed off as well. Um, so, yeah, guys, other than that, other than that, um, that will do us for today then. So as always, please don't forget to fill in the, the survey. Uh, it doesn't even take 30 seconds. Okay. Um, that is in the um, the description. And like I say, um, it's a massive help to us. Um, it helps us out hugely on this end. And um, your feedback's important as well. Of course, as always, we like to know what we're doing well and where we can be um, meeting you guys even better. You know, so so yeah. If, if you don't mind, just fill, filling in that survey, um, and then yeah, we will be back next Tuesday exactly the same time. That's it. Um, ho hopefully, get set away a little bit earlier next week and not have any uh, te technical difficulties. But that's the nature of technology, isn't it? That's what we get. That's, that's what we about. get. You know, uh, we're really lucky that we've been able to stay in contact over the last year, the last eighteen months, however long it's going to turn out to be. You know, um, it, it works against us sometimes, but you know, it's been it's been an absolute blessing. Um. And I'm sure we'll all be appreciating it even more when we are back in the classroom, you know, as well. So uh, we, 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 we'll, uh, we'll get there, guys. And, of course, we'll keep you updated with any everything to do with men's health and anything to do with getting back into the classroom and, and being back in person and stuff like that as well. So, yeah, keep your eyes on, uh, on, on our socials. Give any of us uh, a shout if you need to, email or whatever it is. Give it, get in touch on the Media Savvy page. Uh, and we will be back same time next week. And we'll, and we'll keep this ball rolling and get a little bit of a deeper dive into circuit training. And um, thank you guys for diving in the chat. Thank you for tuning in, and thank you, Daniel, for jumping on with us this morning, bud. No Pleasure worries, as yeah. always. Yeah. Cool. Uh, anything to add? Or... That's it, mate. I think I think you think you covered everything there, buddy. Sweet, sweet, cool. That'll do us then, guys. Have a good week. Stay safe. Take care of yourself and everyone around you. Uh, and uh, if I don't see you before, I'll catch you guys next week on the next one. See you later, guys.